Hi, I'm Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machine, and welcome to Make It Fresh. Today we have a studio audience of about 22 people, our maximum, and we're going to be making a lot of different products. Let me tell you what the lineup is for today, subject to change because you never know when Jeff is driving over here from Daytona Beach if he passes a strawberry farm or uh, a roadside stand selling cherries, the whole formula could change immediately. But for now, tie-dye Jeff, Jeff Markow, will be making wild cherry Snickers ice cream. Uh, I have a surprise presentation that uh, you'll have to wait and see what it is. Um, Christy is going to make pumpkin cheese, uh, sorry, pumpkin cheesecake ice cream. Uh, Jeff is going to make sinful bun ice cream. That sounds good. That should be nice and sticky. Um, and then after lunch, uh, we'll be doing uh, Jeff again with Rocky Road ice cream and Christy finishing up with a cranberry Cosmo sorbet. Oh, that sounds good. So that's our lineup for today, and I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you in a minute. Hi, welcome to Make It Fresh. I'm Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machine. Christy Brown, vice president of sales and marketing. Jeff Markow, you know as uh, tie-dye Jeff. So today uh, we're going to make a bunch of different flavors. And Jeff, we're going to turn it over to you to start. I start? What are yeah. you making today? Okay, for well, starters? since I'm starting, uh, and it's morning uh, here on the East Coast, uh, and my wife made some beautiful cinnamon buns, I thought we'll make cinnamon bun ice cream. Uh, wow, the enthusiasm is overwhelming. Uh, this is a 24, right? Yes, it is. Yes, this is the same machine that uh, we've worked on for the past uh, couple of days uh, in the store. It's a 24 quart. Uh, so we can either make a full batch or half batch. I don't know. Uh, what do you You think? have three bladders. What? You have three bladders. So you want a full batch of this stuff, huh? Got to get on camera to talk. Oh, that's <laughs> yes. You can pick. <laughs> we've, been, we've been chastised from talking off camera. Oh. So, uh, so now everything will be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this, this is what uh, the dairy mix comes, the blend. Uh, I just call it cream. It's basically heavy cream. This is what they come in. They come in bladders, and there are 10 quarts to a bladder. Coincidentally, uh, all my formulas in my book, in my kits, and in the class uh, require 10 quarts in the machine. That's one batch. And we get out maybe six or seven gallons uh, as a result. Uh, but if you have a, a smaller machine, uh, then you cut this. I cut it in quarters, but Steve and I disagree on this. If you have the CB350, he, you say four quarts, right? <laughs> <laughs> you say four quarts, Yes, right? Jeff, four quarts. Thank whoa, you. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Technically, no. You can go three and a half and, or three, depending on what product you're making. So just so we're all clear. We're going to have to buy more cameras. <laughs> <laughs> or sneakers. Okay, so, uh, so uh, I don't know, should I make a full batch or a half batch? Uh, how hungry are you? Full batch. Full batch. Okay, we're making a full batch. Therefore, what we'll do is we'll put, I always put something under here, and I make sure that we're good. We're good. Uh, and we'll put the bladder into the machine. Not technically the bladder. Early, huh? <laughs> okay, so this is the 10 quarts. It'll go in here. Perfect pour, huh? My mic on? <laughs> All right. Um, the one of the questions I'm sure you'll ask is how much is this stuff? And uh, of course, like everything else, it keeps going up. We used to pay. Uh, 
Believe it or not, I used to pay $32 for a box, a case, which has two bladders in it. And that was a scant 10 years ago. Now, uh, the box with two bladders is about $53, $54. And it changes all over the country. Uh, but here in Florida, that's what they're running. Can I say that? Uh, yeah, so that, that so $54, $54 divided by five. And that's your cost per gallon, because each uh, bladder is two and a half gallons, so there's five gallons in a box. So if you paid $54, divide by five, and that's your cost per gallon. Why do you need to know the cost per gallon? Oh, because that's what people ask me, is how much per gallon. Because, and every gallon that you use will make two gallons of ice cream. So if your mix costs you, say, $14, your cost per gallon is $7, plus the flavor. And I don't concern myself with that. I care about the cost per batch of ice cream. And then I divide the servings into that, and then I know what we're doing, right? We did that. You can go sit down. I'm going to play Ed McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> ho, 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 ho. <laughs> That's a good one, Johnny. Uh, okay, so the, the mix is in there. I, I uh, will just use these in there, and then a little Tarani cinnamon uh, to kick it up a notch. So what we're going to have to do is cut these into... Oh, I got the hint. Hmm? Are you looking at me to cut them? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. No. Uh, ooh. 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 <laughs> ah. Ah. So we'll cut a few of these up. And uh, we'll throw them in the machine, right? Oh, thanks. Uh, you can help, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> kind of figured. Let me wash my hands. <laughs> or sanitizer anywhere? Nope. No, don't worry about it. It's only for them. <laughs> you shut off my water. <laughs> All right. So first we'll start the machine off, and you notice that I don't have to do this, do I? Okay, there's a panel here, and you hit it, and it says, make ice cream or get help. If you hit the get help, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just kidding. The get, tell them what the get help is. The get help is a series of uh, videos. Don't tell me. Tell them. It's a series of videos that will uh, guide you through anything that you might have been doing wrong, like putting a blade in backwards or forgetting to turn on the power to the machine or the water. Uh, so you can reach us seven days a week, uh, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., but after that, at 2 in the morning, we prefer you use the Get Help feature on there. It's, it's very, excuse me, helpful. All right, so I'm going to turn it on just so that when we add stuff, it's, it's mi mixing. So I'll hit Make Ice Cream, Homemade, and Start. And you can hear it starting up. Oh, that's nice and quiet. Until uh, we till we turn the compressor on. Oh, look at you making very nice. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, nicely done. Well, I'm going to start putting them in. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here they go. I always say the hardest part of this job is not licking your fingers. Yeah. Okay, reach down here and get a spatula. I've got the sliding in technique done down to a science. Well, how many years has it been? <laughs> oh, look at you do it. Mm. Oh, save one. Save one. The presentation. <coughs> oh. Right. <coughs> Ooh, caught it just in time, didn't Hey, you did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A uh, couple more of these things. You're scaring me with those fingers. That's what the spatula is for. We don't need no damn spatulas. <laughs> now we'll add a little... Uh, uh-uh. We're going to add precisely an amount. Uh, 16. 
This serves a lot of good, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you need little ones? No, this is all right. Uh, we'll add 16 ounces of Tarani. Uh, they're not writing it anyway. That's all right. They'll have the videotape. Oh, that's right. Okay, 16 ounces of this. Could you explain your trick on measuring that? Because I have for years been making coffee in the morning, bleary-eyed, and trying to guess how much uh, water I'm putting in. When you have a measuring cup or a bucket with gradations on it or measurements on it, whether it's this or that, uh, if you look at it and pour it in, you'll be doing this. <laughs> so if you turn it and fill it up, you can see where it, I don't think they get it. I get it. All right, we'll add a little of this. And, and then that was we'll 10. add some vanilla. That was how many ounces? 16. Okay. Uh-oh. We have another one. Uh, it's in the kitchen. And uh, I like my rule of thumb on vanilla is one ounce per quart of mix. Is this working? They're good. They hear you. <laughs> you ought to set the alarm so that we wake them up by lunch. <laughs> Ten ounces. So there's not even one. But we're getting uh, refills here. Of course, that's my vanilla, so that's why I'm so free with it. I uh, use. You, now I you use, know better than that. I do, use two ounces. Do you see anything I, I use special? one ounce to two quarts what? of mix. You see anything special so about I use, the label? Uh, oh, but the, the, the manufacturer's instructions. <laughs> <laughs> say uh, one ounce to uh, four quarts, so we're both using more vanilla. We're trying to get a very strong, intense flavor. Okay. And that's Lockhead vanilla. It's the expensive stuff. It's the good stuff. Okay, so now what's left to do now before we turn on the refrigeration in my world? Taste it. Hmm? Right, taste it. But he didn't ask because, me. I thought it was going to be do a magic trick. <laughs> because this will tell us if it needs anything. We can make it sweeter. We can make it tamer. We can make it more sugary. We can do whatever we want at this point. I need a second opinion. I'm the guinea pig. So to speak. Uh -huh. I think it needs more. Mm-hmm. Right? Let's put I'm a little more. I'm tasting more cream than cinnamon. Oh boy. Okay. So how much was that whole bottle? Exactly. <laughs> Let me have it. I it like to the pass whole around. Why do I ask? Did you guys want to look at it and pass it around? Just give it a sniff. Yes. And then we'll add some more of this. You know, you can do this here. <laughs> Me? You know, you get a feeling for the, how the day is going to go. <laughs> so I was saying to you're, this guy when he told me. You're doing great. Well, while you do that, you so Lockhead Vanilla, as Steve was mentioning, uh, you can't see it, but it says Steve's Special Blend. And if you call or if you talk to Darren, just say, I want Steve's Vanilla, he'll know exactly which flavor you're talking about. It's 103A. This is the one that Steve uh, religiously uses every single time, time in, time out. And uh, so Darren put on there Steve's Special Blend for him, just for Steve. That's an all-natural <laughs> vanilla. Um, and uh, it's, it's well priced uh, for what it is. And uh, a, a gallon of vanilla lasts a long time. So you can call us and we'll give you uh, uh, Darren Rotman's uh, phone number, his direct line, you can speak to him. But that's another family business like us. Mm -hmm. He and says USA. vanilla lasts forever, but not with Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing lasts forever. How much what? Cinnabons are you using? A tray. How many cinnabons are you using? How many are in the tray? If I had to write it down. Probably 
probably 12. 12. Okay, thank you. Now, if you get them, if you make them, they'll look like, if you get them from Cinnabon, which I tried to do, uh, but I couldn't find one locally. They were in Orlando. Uh, so my wife made these. She's famous for these. But I thought Cinnabon, you know, there. Then I could actually call it Cinnabon ice cream. Not that I wouldn't now, but I guess legally, right? Okay, now we want the good stuff, right? How about the refrigeration? Oh boy, you're a stickler for detail. Well, nothing happens until you turn on the refrigeration. That's correct. So we'll just add the last of them and then we'll taste again. You're out of Cinnabon, so there's nothing else you can do. Oh, there's always <laughs> stuff we can do. You we know, have we a can spare. put in cherry and call it cherry bun ice cream. All right. Uh, so now we'll put on the refrigeration and listen for the compressor. You hear that? And then the water, this is a water cooled machine. The water comes into the machine and goes out. And if you look over here, we don't see, ah, there it is, water coming out. And it should be fairly warm water because what it's doing is cycling in the machine and keeping it cool, just like a car, same thing. Okay? Now, after a minute and a half, if that water, if the uh, machine that? turns off and you call uh, Mike McDonald, our senior tech, who's running the control board here today, the first thing he'll ask you is, is the water turned on? And they'll go, oh, I couldn't forget that. And then they go and check the valve and they go, oh, yeah, that's right. We turned it off because we were working on another part of plumbing. So if there's anything that can go wrong with this machine, we can solve it. But nine times out of ten, more like 99 out of 100, it's just something very simple that you've done wrong and it's, it's no big deal. Uh, but the water is what cools the engine. We build them either water-cooled or air-cooled. I like the water cooled because it's not going to put a lot of hot air into this room and then I have to pay extra for air conditioning. So your first flavor of the day is off to the races. Yes, first flavor to me is off to the races. So uh, by the way, we'll probably do a question period. So since you all have a pen and paper, write down a, a fairly intelligent question uh, and then we'll get to it one that you want an answer to. We do unintelligent questions too. Yeah, unintelligent <laughs> questions are okay too. If it's a question that's pertaining to what we are currently doing, making, or related to that, please ask that at that time, that's great. But if it's just a general question, if you don't mind to write those down, that would be very helpful when it comes time for Q&A. Or it could be anything, the, you know, the mean temperature in Brooksville in August, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We just need stuff to fill up the segment. <laughs> Don't make me smile, I chipped a tooth last night. <laughs> I look like a hillbilly. Okay, by the way, any questions Don't about... Don't talk what about we're my kid, folks. <laughs> <laughs> any questions about what we're doing now? No? Quiet, wow. Crickets. Crickets. No questions? How? Uh, Go ahead, Marie. I was thinking I would add walnuts to it. You have them with you? <laughs> if you have them with you, I'll certainly add them. You can add raisins, you can add pecans, you can add walnuts, you can add chips. Uh, you know, the, the sky's the limit. When you have your store, you can do whatever you want. What I try to do is, a good point by her, uh, I try to make things that other stores don't have. Uh, today we're going to make uh, Rocky Road. You, you know what Rocky Road ice cream is, but we're going to put a little slant on it. Uh, we're going to use white chips and mini marshmallows and make it a cream ice and call it Winter Rocky Winter Road. You know, snow. Ah, come on. What's up? Uh, I know that people watching this on tape can't see this, but how many people are thinking of going into the ice cream business? Raise your hand. Wow, almost everybody. Italian ices? Yeah, there's a few there too. Excellent. 
Uh, so any questions you have uh, about either of those subjects, anything at all, we'll be able to answer them during the question and answer period. Um, ah! See, they're eating it already. <laughs> oh. oh, good? Okay. Ah. All right. That's good stuff. If she says it's good, it's good. That's good stuff. Okay, how long does it take to make this stuff? Oh, I'm at seven minutes, you say? Seven or nine? We'll pick one. Nine? Okay. So after nine, I just shut it off? The point is, you can't time this, shutting it off, putting it on, by notes, because every batch is different. It could, this could take eight minutes. It could take 11 minutes. And of course, it depends on what? What do you think? Sugar. Sugar. Sugar is in not only in sugar, sugar's in alcohol, sugar's in uh, the mix has a little sugar. Certainly those cinnamon buns have some sugar in it. So, the, and the Tarani has some sugar in it. So the more sugar, the longer it'll take. That's why when I make adult flavors, uh, it takes longer, sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes 22 minutes, depending upon the alcohol. Uh, but the one thing you have to do when you're making ice cream is focus. You can't be playing Angry Birds on your uh, phone. You can't be texting your friends. It's not going to work. You're going to screw something up. So just understand that the time that you take to make ice cream, you're working on the ice cream. What you can do to make things good, you'll find that you're going to make ice cream for, say, three hours each time you do it. So therefore, when this is working in here, what are you doing? Whew. You're preparing for the next one. And then you've got your ingredients for the next one, and then get the next one going. This way, after the batch is done, you're ready to roll. Maybe you have to rinse the machine, maybe you don't, but you're ready to roll. Yes? When you're looking at the uh, ingredients, what are you looking for? When we keep looking in there? Yeah, what are you looking for? But, uh, when it starts to work, it, it gets thicker. Like ice cream is thick. And when it starts to happen, it happens quick. It'll be liquid, it'll be liquid, it'll be liquid, it'll be liquid, boom, it'll be ice cream. So, and I don't like to let it go too long. Uh, Steve lets it go a little longer than I do, and nothing wrong with it, just preference. I pull it a little sooner, him a little later. Uh, <laughs> and probably not, neither of us are right or wrong. Uh, but that's why we keep checking. You know, just so we, it's focused, you know, I, as soon as you stop, something will go wrong. Uh, so that's why we're always, it's a habit, right? You always look at it. Yes. See, now it's getting thicker now. Uh, so it, and when it starts to get, remember, this is what's happening. You have a cylinder in there where we poured the cream, then we turned it on and we added all the cake. So it's mixing it up. It's going at uh, 320, 234 revolutions a minute. So it's mixing it up. And then then we added a little of that Tarani and then some vanilla. So all the ingredients are in there working and working and working. And the blades are scraping the sides of the container constantly. The container's getting cold, so the liquid in there is getting cold when it encounters the container. The blades scrape it off. So as it gets colder and more solid, the blades will scrape it into the middle. And if you see that happening all these times in a minute, that's how we get thick ice cream. One important thing uh, Jeff is making, this is a new flavor for you today, right? Yes. Okay, so this is a brand new flavor for him. And so he had a good idea uh, mathematically and from past history of making flavors of how much he was going to use. Uh, but as he's getting ready to make it, he's also making changes to the formula. Write them down. Write them down on your formula, and when the ice cream comes out, label the container with a number and your formula with a number. Because and tell them about the New England, the mint chip. Tell them. Don't recall. You always want it to be. Oh uh, yes, we. What we're looking for in ice cream is consistency. 
Uh, you want to have, once you settle on your flavor, you keep it set that way. Uh, and you because make it over and over and over customers again. Customers will expect it. Yeah, the customer uh, remembers what their uh, your uh, ice cream was like when they came two months ago, and two months from now, they don't uh, want it to be different. I saw a franchise called Swenson's Ice Cream uh, in California. We started them in the '70s, the and they went to about 470 stores, and they oh, fell well, apart because they moved uh, from the West Coast to the East Coast, and the store owners. Uh, we're saying, well, I can get this flavor instead of Tarani, or I can, uh, I can skimp on the chips. And people would say, oh, it just doesn't taste the same as it did in San Francisco. Well, that was the kiss of death of the franchise. Uh, when you go to a McDonald's, I don't think it's a particularly good hamburger, but no matter where you go in the world, that McDonald's Big Mac is going to be exactly the same. Whether it's in Istanbul or Sri Lanka or Jersey City, uh, it will be the same and that's what you need year after year is consistency so when you set your formula don't change it did you just did you tell the McDonald's story there yeah oh I mean I wasn't listening <laughs> to go back on what Jeff was saying on pulling it thicker or thinner if you pull it on the thinner side it's going to fill your bucket more or your container more evenly if you pull it on the thick side you're going to notice yourself to sit there and, and pack your container down to help get those air pockets out. Jeff does do a lot of uh, variegates and folds ins and stuff like that. So having a thinner ice cream, it's a lot easier to get your spatula in there and do your folding than if it, if it was super thick. And I just thought of, this is the first time making it, wouldn't it have been nice to have a cinnamon variegate through it, much like a cinnamon bun? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm already putting that thought, if this flies, if we like it, then at the store, we'll make it with a cinnamon variegate in it, so it really will be, it'll not only taste like a cinnamon bun, it'll resemble a cinnamon bun. A, a variegate, if you're new to this, is a swirl throughout the ice cream. You buy butterscotch swirl, and that swirl that's in there, in the vanilla ice cream, we call that a variegate. So that's, that's a new term that you've heard and you'll, you'll hear a lot of. It's almost ready. Well, did, you, did you explain the cutoff check? No, he does that. I don't do that. Oh. I do the peak on the bottom when it maintains a peak. Okay. Uh, Everybody has their different ways. Uh, everybody's have, different. I have some customers who look at it and they say, well, it's lapping against the left-hand wall. Uh, so that's where it's perfect. <laughs> Speaking of that. Okay, that's sure good. So I keep checking it like this. And it's pretty close. I'd say we're 35, 40 seconds away. And we're at 12 minutes. Well, he had a lot of mixing time. Yeah, if Jeff makes it, you're looking at a 30-minute batch time. <laughs> but boy, is it good. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready, right? Can you all see that? Think? Or is the table in the way? Yeah. Yeah? Maybe okay. you want, if you want to stand up in the back, if it helps you to see... Uh, so we're going to turn the refrigeration off. When I turn the refrigeration off, I, I don't do anything until I hear the compressor go off. It's just... Uh, uh, why no, that's do, correct. It is good? Yeah, because okay. there's gas still up in the cylinder, and it needs to pump it down. Otherwise, it could stick to the walls. Okay. So, so you wait listen. till that compressor goes we off. We can all listen for it. Usually about 30 seconds, 40 seconds. There, there you go. go. Now I feel good. Everything's working. Everything's happening. And now we can pull it. And see how nice it comes out? Oh, man. That was Don't you. Don't you know the zip technique? You, you shut you me out of the zip way. It. What are we going to do with all this ice cream? Or, oh, I'm giving it to banks. Best way to uh, banks and doctors, great people to give ice cream to free because if the doctor says there's a three hour wait, you bring in some tubs of ice cream and say, look, I brought this for the doctor. And they say, fine, we'll take it to him. Oh, no, I'll hold on to it and give it to him myself. And look, it's melting. I, I get right in. <laughs> Number one in line. Bankers, 
uh, always be nice to your banker because nobody else is and you don't know when you're ever going to need them for a loan. So be nice to the banker and give them ice cream and they'll be happy to work with you. I pay my dog sitter with ice cream. I clear a shelf out on my freezer and I leave a note. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get some cones. See, I'm from New York, so giving bribes is, uh, is just a normal course of business. <laughs> so uh, in your store, you can get as creative as you want. Here's a cinnamon bun, and imagine serving it like that. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Think how much you could charge doing that. Oh, $10 easy. Really? Yeah. No. Sure you could. That's beautiful. It's a nice thing, isn't it? And that cherry that you wanted to put into the Cinnabon, you could put a maraschino cherry on top. Correct. That's no. next one. I like oh, the sorry. raisins. I'm giving it away. <laughs> you tasted it? Yeah, I took a little taste of his. <laughs> that was really good. That's a, that's a big hit, Jeff. All right. I'm going to make, uh, for a flavor today, um, which I called goat lemon ice. Now, I am not, at my age, the most hip person in the world, but I start seeing these advertisements and it says goat on it. Uh, and so I finally asked uh, my wife what it means and it's greatest of all time. And so I think that uh, you'll agree that this is the greatest of all time lemon ice that you've ever had. But my purpose for making the lemon ice is not to make you uh, a delicious product to try, but to talk to you about a vehicle of how to get into uh, the hard ice cream business, the Italian ice business, for as little money as possible. For many, many years, the average stores I were doing were $125,000, $150,000. They were 1,700 square feet, 2,000 square feet. Now we're doing stores for a much lower price than that uh, and much more, uh, shorter, smaller square footage and not on the main street. Uh, social media has done wonderful things for our business. It means that um, uh, people are finding out, instead of just walking by the store, they're finding out about it on social media. Hey, I found this great place that has dairy-free ice cream. You gotta try it. Or there's this place that makes Italian ices or this super premium ice cream. Uh, the customers are finding you. Uh, Ray Kroc, the founder, uh, the, the head person for McDonald's, always used to say that uh, the key to success was location, location, location. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily true anymore. I think with social media, uh, you can, I know Paula and I, my wife and office manager, uh, we go to restaurants now in, in different cities that we've heard about from friends, they say, oh, here's a little restaurant, it's only got 30 tables, but the chef changes the menu every other night. Instead of one of these uh, plastic coated uh, menus that you know they haven't changed in two years, the chef is actually coming up with new flavors. Um, and that's what we look for in a restaurant. And the same thing has happened in the frozen dessert business. So let me get the lemon ice going and then I'll talk to you about my two concepts here of uh, how to get you into business. So I have, um, did we pass out the formula? No, we're gonna do that now. Here's the formula for it. And those of you watching on TV, uh, video, listen to me, YouTube. <laughs> those of you watching on YouTube can follow along. You'll also find this recipe at our website along with 527 other recipes uh, at emerythompson.com. So it's basically gonna be sugar, water, and lemon juice. No artificial chemicals, no preservatives, uh, nothing this like that. Is this Luigi's recipe? No, this is mine. Oh, okay. Um, and this time I've gotten uh, some help uh, from uh, uh, Mr. Cannoli, who... Uh, hmm? Mr. Cannoli helped me on this. Let me uh, first get the uh, sugar going. Some of these are pumpkin cheesecake. Okay, well, we'll get you the right recipe. When Christy comes back in, that's going to be her formula later. So I need two pounds of sugar. Let's 
Let's, Scott, open that freezer up. Units. One point seven zero. We're going to two. There we go. Okay, I have uh, two pounds, two pounds of sugar. Um, my four quarts of water. I'm just using re regular tap water. And you have, the water? Hmm? you have the water? I don't. What do you need? Four quarts. People often ask me the question, do I need to um, purify the water to make a really great Italian ice? Uh, my answer is 99% uh, of the time the answer is no. Uh, here in Brooksville, our water is a very, in Brooksville, Florida, our water is a very high mineral content. Most of you tasting it today wouldn't like it at all. That's why we have bottled water for you. But the people who grew up in Brooksville, Florida, or moved here 18 years ago like I did, were used to the water. We've been tasting it forever, so we see nothing wrong with it. Therefore, if I'm selling lemon ice in Brooksville, Florida, there's no reason to purify the water. Now, if I go down to Miami, most everybody in Miami uh, in the wintertime is from New York and then the Northeast. And the Northeast has a completely different water. It doesn't have the mineral content in it. I think it's a better tasting water. It's what I grew up on. So in Miami, I would say, yes, filter the water so you can get some of those minerals out. But the, for the most part, no matter where you are in the world, your audience is eating this product on water that uh, they've already tasted, so it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to filter. It's not like uh, uh, making bagels or pizza where uh, a high mineral content water will keep the uh, dough from rising properly. So this is just plain water. I am using uh, pure cane sugar. Uh, let me get a bag and just talk about that. I, Jeff used to uh, razz me forever because... Quick question, what happened to the pumpkin cheesecake recipe? We passed them out over here, so if you'll pass those out. That's cranberry... For, oh. I need my lemon. We passed out the wrong one. Um, this says on it, this is a domino, and it says pure premium cane sugar. If you go to the supermarket and you buy the local store brand or a lot of other brands, it'll say sugar. It's not cane sugar. It's uh, beet sugar. And uh, it has whole different freezing properties. It doesn't taste the same. Uh, you spend a little bit extra on the cane sugar and you'll have a better product. So plain old water, pure cane sugar. And then the real secret is fresh squeezed lemon juice. Uh, I, uh, we squeezed this uh, yesterday. Uh, from Meyers lemons, but you can use any lemon. Sunkist are great lemons. Uh, Florida is not famous for making great lemons. We make big, big lemons. They look like uh, uh, grapefruit, uh, but they have no flavor to them. So look for the Sunkist brand, and, and that will make a difference. Um, making my lemon ice this way will end up costing me just under $10 uh, for a three gallon tub. That's one of these. So three three dollars to make this. If I sell it at about two seventy-five, I'm going to make about three hundred dollars uh, off of this tub, minus uh, the nine dollars and eighty-five cents it cost me to make it. If I want to cheapen the product, I can use a cheap extract. I can use corn sugar. Uh, I can do a lot of things, and I might get that nine dollars and eighty-three cents down to about uh, seven dollars and ninety cents. So for two bucks. You're making a cheap product that can, is what's sold by wholesalers to you. Uh, if you're just buying from you know, one of my big customers who's wholesaling, it's, it's not nearly as good as this. So two, $2 to make the very best lemon ice, $2 more cost. And again, you're making about $290, $275, $290 per tub. So the bottom line is just like Jeff says, uh, use quality ingredients and you'll have a line out the door. If you buy cheap ingredients, you'll have people buying lemon ice. But you use great ingredients, you'll develop, develop a reputation, and they'll be lined up out the door. I'm going to pour my uh, sugar into the four quarts of water. Check the formula. Four quarts of water, two pounds of pure cane sugar. And we'll stir that up. I'll just grab that. It's got cinnamon stuff on it. Ooh, it does. Good catch. 
Here's a fresh one down here. Now, we're storing this in cold water. Um, it's going to dissolve very quickly, less than a minute to stir that up. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to heat up the water. You don't have to boil the water. You don't want to do anything to it except this. If when I pour it into the machine, I have a little stream of sugar still left in the bucket, so what? Uh, I just put two pounds of sugar in here. A little stream one way or the other, you know, an ounce is not going to make a difference. That's good enough for that. Gates all closed. And let's pour it in. I found that if you hold the bucket up like this, you won't spill any. If you rest the bucket on the lid, uh, you're more inclined to spill. Christy, what's all that noise behind me? Jeff. Oh, of course. Being noisy. Oh, of course. But he can't hear himself. No. <laughs> okay. That's in there. Now watch. This is where Jeff and I are different. I'm going to the screen. It says make ice cream, which brings me choices. I am going to go. I don't see what I want to make on this page. I'm going to the next page. I know you can't see this up close. And I hit Italian ice and start. Now I turn on my refrigeration. Nothing is going to happen uh, as far as freezing for about six minutes. The temperature is dropping down from uh, 75 degree water down into the 30s. And then just like boiling water, all of a sudden, boom, it'll snap at a certain temperature and things will start to freeze up. So while Jeff, uh, get back to you in a minute, while Jeff leaves his just spinning, I'm already freezing. I'm in, I'm in here to make as much ice in an hour as I possibly can. Quick question. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What's the difference between going from homemade to Italian ice? What's the difference between going to homemade to Italian ice is a slightly different speed of the infinite overrun control to control the air content. So now I'm going to add, uh, I have a secret ingredient that I'm putting in. And if you'd like to know what that is, you can email me, you can call me, and I'll be happy to tell you. I will tell our audience uh, here uh, when we're not taping. It's a cheap trick on my part to get you to call me because I get lonely and I want to talk to you. And it works. I did it 10 years ago with uh, uh, frozen yogurt and I got a call yesterday from a lady wanting to know 10 years later, what was the secret ingredient in the, uh, frozen, in, in, in the uh, frozen yogurt? And I told her and uh, she was happy and I got to talk to her and sell her a machine. Very simple. We're going to put in the uh, lemon juice. Uh, do you see something bigger? What? How much do you have to measure? Uh, this will do. We're putting in um, 12 ounces for starters. Drop it. Why don't it. you use my trick that I just told you? This will work. What is this for? I dropped Christy? it. Starting. What? Starting. Study? Dirty. Dirty. I don't know okay. how else to. I don't know what you're saying. Wash. Okay, now, again, it's what? freezing. I it. But I want to see, like Jeff does, how it's going. I'm going to just take a tiny bit out, very carefully, and I'll taste it. That's good, but it needs a little more. Steve. Oh, Christy, on my desk is the lemon peel, I think. Oh, it's right here, sorry. It looks like two and a half. Are these two and a half? Two and a half. Two and a half and three look the same. The uh, two and a half is tapered to the bottom, the three is straight down. Have a, that's a cup. This is lemon peel. Yum. 
Yeah. Uh, taking a cheese grater and, and grating the peel and then just adding uh, a little bit of sugar to it and um, that was it. Now I'm going to just try it one more time. All the time it's still freezing so I'm not wasting time watching it. I already have it through the freezing process so by the time I say it's good we're almost ready to pull it. And if, I, if, if you could see in here, which you can't, it's still a liquid. If I turned it off and turned it back on, this would be easier, but let's see. That's good. I'm going to go for the full. <coughs> what did we do? I'm not a pro at that. I, I a, did that <coughs> one time and it went everywhere. We did a full quart, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... So if you're adjusting your formula, let's see how I, well I hit it. Um, three quarters of a quart of lemon juice is what I put in there. So let's see, a quart is 32, eight fours, four fours, 16. I can't do the math. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out what three quarters of a quart was in ounces. You did a cup and a half. 24, okay. So oh, we're good to go, everything's in there. Now, what I wanted to talk about is let me take this, uh, like, no, I'll take this down for a minute. Christy made that up, it's beautiful. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Now, there are two ways that we can get you into business. The biggest problem with uh, especially young people getting into business is they don't have any credit rating yet. And oh, you just put it away. I didn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You don't have your van of white dress on to go I like don't. this, or, or <laughs> round 16. <laughs> um, it's very hard to get money. Uh, we can talk to you about getting an SBA loan, Small Business Administration loan. <clears throat> we also have a lease to own uh, uh, program uh, on our machines. But the important point is we've got to get a low starting point. So we have put together. Um, a concept of a package. I only sell my batch freezers. I don't sell anything else except for the hardener. But you can start off in business with the CB200, uh, our smallest production machine. This is going to make three quarts uh, every time. The bigger one makes six quarts and we go up from there to 44 quarts. But you can start with the CB200 and you can have a chest freezer like this and uh, this cost me $149 at Walmart, and it goes to uh, uh, nine below zero. So it could be used for hardening small quantities of ices or ice cream. It could be used for serving out of. Um, you could uh, you know, be serving cups and pints. So I could be filling this size container, a uh, half pint, all day long and selling these uh, for about uh, $5.00. Uh, each of lemon ice. Um, so this is a great package to sell to people. Um, I'll also talk about pint containers, but pint containers has become a tremendous business in ice cream. Um, because if the store, if people know that you have it, you have a convenience store or you have a pizza parlor, they can run in, they have a chest freezer like this off in the corner, and they grab two of these and they put them on the counter and the server says, um, would you like a receipt? Uh, would you like a bag? No, no. And I'm out the door in 45 seconds. I bought two. I will always buy two because I'm going to buy a mint chip ice cream for me and a coconut uh, ice cream for Paula. I can't come home and say, hey, Paula, look what I bought for me. You know, I'll be, where's, where's my coconut? You know, I'll be, in the, I'll be in the, sleeping in the garage. So you're always going to buy two. And we're getting anywhere from eight, nine, ten, eleven dollars for a pint of ice cream. Uh, Italian ice is uh, slightly less. I then came up with the idea of you have a lot of people working in office buildings uh, who, at lunchtime, they go out to Starbucks and they grab a coffee and a croissant or some other thing that uh, Starbucks is selling. Well, to be truthful, if you went out at lunchtime and it doesn't matter what you look like, you could be, uh, you know, 98 pounds, you could be more. But you walk back with a pint of ice cream or a pint of Italian ice and you sit down at your desk, 
you're going to look kind of gluttonous. You're going to look like, oh, 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 look at Frankie over there. He's eating a whole pint of ice cream all by himself. But if you sold a half pint, that's a nice little size. And it's exactly half the price. Uh, and so I can afford to buy that. I mean, the coffee's already up to $3. I don't mind paying 5 for that. And I can have most of that at my lunchtime. I can put it in the freezer and have some more at 3.30. Uh, so I'm going to consume it today. So that's a great size that nobody's selling, is, is half pints. Uh, the pints are really terrific. Would you just take that for me? I did. Okay. And taste tested it. Okay. How was it? Very good. Good. <laughs> the, uh, the pints are the perfect size uh, because you're going to eat some on the way home. Uh, ladies, if you don't know this, uh, we men are extremely smart. There is no ice cream container that you ever sent us to go out and get that doesn't have teeth marks in it. But, you know, we're, we're, we're biting into it on our way home while driving. And then we smooth it over with our finger. And then we look and we say, oh, there's an indentation. So we're so smart, as soon as we get home, we grab a spoon. Still unpacking the groceries. We grab a spoon and dig in and take a bite and get yelled at. Hey, the Thompsons are coming for dinner. Leave that alone. <laughs> I already had my ice cream. Uh, and what you don't, when the Thompsons don't finish up for dinner, you might have another taste of it at 10 o'clock at night. So what does this mean? It means they're going to come back to your store tomorrow or the next day and buy two more pints. Um, I've talked about this in previous uh, videos that uh, if you're dealing, uh, thinking about doing uh, quarts or half gallons, don't. A half gallon is four of these. If these are selling at $10, that's $40 for a half gallon. And even Bill Gates, with all his money, is not going to spend 40 bucks on ice cream. It, it sits as well as having an iPhone with a $100,000 solid gold uh, case. It's, it's just over, it's overboard. But the pint is perfect. So no matter what kind of business you have, you can be selling pints with just a little chest freezer like this and making them with the small machine. Now, if, you, if, you're, if you're gonna do an ice cream parlor or a whole Italian ice parlor, then you go to the CB350. This costs more, but it's still extremely reasonable. Our prices are always direct to you, no dealers, uh, right at our website. And you tie that in with either a chest freezer like Jeff uses, they're about $900 and they're the big one. They jokingly call them the coffin because they're perfect for stuffing a body in. And it, it just lifts up like that and you've got all that product. Or you can go to our hardening cabinet, uh, which is going to make uh, a, lo a lot of storage. Imagine that all filled up with, oh, thank you, Vanna. <laughs> Imagine that filled up with pints. Um, you've got a lot of freezer there. What's unique about that is it goes to 25 below, and no matter how much, say, hot soup you put into it, it's going to maintain at least 15 below. So it's going to do the job much quicker and faster. Still floppy. Still floppy, but I'm going to fill a couple containers. So um, with this, Here's a little trick that Christy came up with. It's now spinning at a high rate of speed, and I can fill right like that, very simple. Or, if I wanted to, I can just tap the speed down. One of my competitors sells a door for $3,000 that does this, and it doesn't work as well because you're, as it takes so much time that you're putting uh, a different consistency into the product. So I can take this down to a real slow speed, and now it's even easier to fill the container. Well, is that nice? I did, overdid it a little bit, but that's beautiful. And I'm going to take it up to finish it. So instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars getting into business, you can either get into business with the CB200 three-quart machine and a little chest freezer, or you can do the CB350, um, and, and do double the volume. It all comes down to money and labor. If you don't have $150,000 to get into business, then we might as well just be talking about a, you know, a dream that'll never happen. Uh, but if we can get you into business for about a total store for about $35,000, dollars $40,000, now that's, that's doable. Uh, square footage, we're not doing uh, family uh, game centers anymore. We're not doing birthdays. We're not doing lots of toppings and all. We've got 12 flavors of ice cream and we're just banging them out and get people out the door. If it's I had a, 
It's ready? Mm -hmm. So if you'll turn off the refrigeration. You if I had a 900 square foot store and a line out the street, I'd be a happy man because that line out the street, people are going to say, hey, that must be a good product. I think I'll get online. And if that line can move in under 10 minutes or, or less, uh, your customers are going to be happy. So see how fast that comes out? No chemicals in here whatsoever. Basically, sugar, water, and fresh squeezed lemon juice. And I think you're going to taste something pretty amazing. So the takeaway from this, besides a great product, is we have two ways to get you into business for very little money. And then as your business grows, then the cost of this machine, uh, which is in the $30,000 range, uh, isn't going to be even a factor. You'll just say, hey, listen, I'm working 19 hours a day. And if I'm working 19 hours a day at anything, I'm making a lot of money. You can't help but be making a lot of money. And then someday you'll just graduate up to this. And what will you do with these? Well, everybody wants a second store. So instead of shipping your ice cream 20 miles to your second store, you'll ship this and teach the manager how to make the product. So that's how you grow the business. Or if you ever look on eBay for an Emory Thompson, good luck. They're not there. Uh, you can't, there's lots of the other brands of machines. There are no Emory Thompsons. They don't exist because our customers are all wildly successful and they hang on to their machines forever. So that's the pitch. I think you're going to uh, like the product that you're going to try. And uh, any questions about the, uh, the product or this concept right now or we'll hold them for the, yes. So um, this machine, if I remember, is one speed, right? No. The little one here yes. is one no. speed. We set it for um, a super premium gelato speed, uh, which is uh, and Italian ice. Italian ice uh, speed is not as much a factor as dairy product is. Dairy product has fat cells and they tend to blow up. You put cream into a bucket like this and stir it by hand and it's going to remain cream. You take an electric mixer, 200 RPM, stick it in there, boom, whipped cream. That, uh, so the speed and the infinite overrun primarily apply uh, to um, the, uh, the no, uh, no dairy fat cells in there. But you've got a product called Dairy Free, and that we want is a cross between the two. Uh, I use either coconut or oat, and we want to have a balance of air in there, but not as much as homemade. And so this machine is set at a speed uh, to do the dairy free and to do uh, custard, uh, gelato and all the Italian ices. This one has uh, 10 or 12 different settings in it for different flavors, plus a manual override. So if you're an executive chef and say Steve's a putz, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I can pick my speeds. Steve did 180, I want 178. Well, good luck knowing the difference between 180 and 178, but you're an executive chef, so be my guest, do it. Yes? For you, Steve. So just to remind me, the, the 200 to your left and then the 350s to your right? Mm -hmm. uh, the little one is, I get left and right mixed up. Sorry. This one is the 200 and, then this one and is this is the 350. Perfect. Okay, thank you. This is around 8,000 and this is getting close to 14,000. 14, Today's date is October 5th, 2022. Yeah, so if you're watching this in 2029, if you can find me a Ford Mustang for uh, $5,000, which was their entry price, you know, I'll take 10. Uh, prices go up with time, and these videos will be out there forever. We've been doing this for 16 years, Jeff. Wow. And you just look marvelous. <laughs> <laughs>
dairy mix. And then to that, you can add any flavor you want and make successful cream ice. If you've never had cream ice, it's, uh, it's extraordinary. It's, in my world, to me, it's this far from ice cream. It's it, like Italian ices are far from ice cream. That's a different product. Cream ice, some people can't tell the difference in our cream ice to ice cream. Right? You had it, right? Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make a very rocky road winter edition because we're going to use white chips instead of dark chips. And we'll see if we can't make it cream ice, all right? So we have three quarts of water and two pounds of sugar. Close enough. And what's the other one? Dairy mix. One quart of dairy mix, right? Yes, correct. So there's our basic. Now, there's no flavor in here yet. So that's what we're going to add. But the basic, it's right here. Three, two, one. And then you can add anything. You can add, uh, we used to have cereal up there. You can add sugar pops. You can add cinnamon toast crunch. You can add... Uh, uh, anything, raspberries, anything, and make cream ice, as long as you have this. So we'll put this in the machine first. Now, of course, you can double this recipe if you're selling it in your store. Instead of three, two, one, of course, you can make it what? Okay. Now we want to add the flavor. To add the flavor, to make it really chocolatey, uh, I'm going to use two things. I'm going to use Hershey's Special Dark Syrup. It's not Hershey's Chocolate Syrup. This is Hershey's Special Dark. A little harder to find, but a totally different taste. Uh, and we'll, we'll start with a half a quart, a liquid half a quart. And we'll, add, we'll turn the machine on, get it mixing, and we'll add some Hershey Special Dark. To give it a little uh, chocolate extra, we'll add We'll add half a quart of Giardelli chocolate powder. This is basically Giardelli chocolate ground up. Uh, excellent product. Uh, remember we used it Monday? Yeah. It comes in 25 pound box. I mean, it comes in smaller quantities, but it's such a great product that at the store we always have a 25 pound box of it. And they also make white chocolate ground up like that. And those two products can't beat them. Uh, we'll also add chips uh, because Rocky Road has chips, right? Rocky Road? This is a 12 ounce package of uh, Nestle's Toll House white chocolate chips. And then I guess we have to add these things. Uh, I'm not happy about that, but we'll do it anyway. We'll add uh, half a quart, two thirds. I don't know.
We'll see. You know, everything starts with an idea. And then when you follow it through, you're not sure where you're going to go or what's going to happen, really. Uh, Alfred Nobel invented dynamite. You know, he, he didn't start to do that. Where are we going with this? All right. So now what we want to do is what? We want to taste it, and then we want to turn on the machine, because Steve's gnawing his teeth. He's so eager to turn on that refrigeration. Not bad. Not bad, but. Not bad, but. I think I'll add a little more chocolate. Uh, so we added half a quart. Let's add the other half, making it one quart, in case you're taking notes. And because this is just sitting here, we'll add some more of this. A little more. A little more. A little more. Ah, what the hell. <laughs> so there, that should do it. And now, since Steve is close to a heart attack, we'll put this on. Now, what else could you add to make this yours? You could add vanilla. You want to add some vanilla? We'll add some vanilla. We won't add as much as uh, we normally do because there's much less cream going on here. So we'll just add a little. What else can we add? To make this your own product, you could, you may decide to add nuts. Bailey's? Bailey's? Yeah, we could add Bailey's to it. There's supposed to be white chocolate. I think we added them. Yes. Yeah, it'll be so hard. We did, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the point is, when you have a store, remember that there are ice cream stores. They don't make as good as the ice cream, but the, the public doesn't know that when looking for an ice cream store. So maybe you want your flavors to stand out, be a little different. So you could take your Rocky Road like We're using white chips. You could, you could do anything. You could add cherries and call it Rocky Road Cherry. This afternoon we're going to make one of the biggest sellers in ice cream is my Snickers ice cream, because it's really Snickers ice cream. And I decided a, a couple weeks ago I was playing in the store and I made wild cherry Snickers. And now nobody has that, so we're going to make it today, so everyone will have it. Can you turn the air down a little in here? Colder or yeah, colder. Their eyes are glazing over and I'm warm. Okay, so we are ready to roll. And uh, this will be, what should we call it? Winter wonder. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Not the most creative group. I think. <laughs> what? Winter, 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 Winter Rocky Road. Right, right. Winter in the Rockies? No. Um, <laughs> what? Well, you you know you do want people to have an idea what what it is. So, I like to have Rocky Road in the title. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could call it Heaven's Dream, and everyone at the counter is going to go, uh, "What's in the Heaven's Dream?" You know. But Rocky Road, hopefully, they'll have a, a good idea. <laughs> it's chocolate. It's always chocolate, right? It's always got mini marshmallows and chips mm -hmm. in it. So we just uh, changed it a little bit, and we'll see what happens. And I don't know what's going to happen to those mini marshmallows. They may goo up. They may hold together. We'll see. But I know I'm going to add a few more halfway through the batch so that we maintain the integrity of the mini marshmallows, right? I got a feeling I don't want to be the person to clean up clean the, the machine. Clean the machine, right. It's going to be like peanut butter. 
Well, we'll see, because we're going to add a few more. As soon as it starts to thicken a little, I'll add the rest of the quart. If you're going to make peanut butter and jelly Italian ice or peanut butter and jelly ice cream, make it as your flat last flavor of the day because the stuff is so sticky it gets all over everything. Better yet, work your way up to be the CEO of the company and then order someone else to do it. <laughs> this person. <laughs> yeah, well, she's now a vice, vice president, so she's, she's now ordering someone else to do it. <laughs> I still do it. Finally, we'll get around to there's no one else to do it, and yeah. that'll end up me, being me do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's sometimes I kick the bucket. I'm like, so Steve, you going to clean that up? Yeah, I'll get to it. Two days later, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> when the room starts smelling of uh, sour milk, <laughs> then I rush in and clean up. <laughs> but what? it is a good tip. Also, if you are working with anything with nuts, make it at the end of the day. Uh, because once you wash out the machine and sanitize it, you're back to uh, good shape. But uh, that uh, nut allergy is a real thing, as, especially in children, because they don't have the immunity that we have. You know, we were kissing dogs and eating dirt all our lives, and uh, they're, they're working on their little devices and not exposed to that as much. It makes a difference. So what does that to do with ice cream? Make nut ice cream, make peanut butter, make this at the end of the day. Thickening up a little, we'll add some more of these. What do you think is going to happen to the original half quart? I think they're all going to mush up. Yeah? I can answer this question. Okay. Because I have that CB200 at home, and I put marshmallows in there, and they do disintegrate. I have also tried to freeze the marshmallows beforehand, and they still disintegrated. Have you tried putting them halfway into the back? Yes. And they still disintegrate? Yes, but that's a very small machine. That one has a whole lot more room than that one does. Right, that's what I was thinking. But so either maybe. way, you're going to get the flavor. You're going to get the marshmallow flavor. So that's what's this important. junk. These are junk. <laughs> and you see where Rose buys them from, right? Walmart. Great value. Great value. Yeah. Walmart. You had a question. Yeah, when you do the peanut butter barrigan, is that something that's in the machine, or is it something you swirl in after? Barrigans you do as it's coming out of the machine. Uh, you, you've, uh, if you look at past videos, you can see Jeff's method, which is fantastic, of pouring in the barrigan. Another way is to take a pastry bag and squeeze it in. A third way is to have your butterscotch and dip a spatula into it, take out a gallon of ice cream and whip it through. But the idea is to get strands. If you just put it into the machine, it just di disappears. You don't even see it. The flavor's there, but you don't see it. And we want the visual of the ice cream. And when you work with, if you're going to use real peanut butter, uh, warm it up a little bit. Don't make it hot, but warm it up. And then that way it makes it a whole lot thinner to pour into the machine, as well as making your variegate. I figured that'd be easier to clean if you're not putting it in there, correct? It's a mess either way. Yeah, well, if it's not going in the machine, there's no, no yeah, mess. Yeah, yeah. But if you can use just ice cream, brush paint mixer method yes that's right i worked with nutella in the machine and it really isn't bad at Look all how beautiful um, so and that's to me a lot more stickier than peanut butter and it cleaned up nice and chocolatey easily. yeah oh. um so you saw what we put in it's only been seven minutes and check it out pretty good not ready yet but maybe a minute and a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. <laughs> From all the other ingredients. Yeah. Uh, Did you guys come up with a name yet? Uh, Winter Rocky Road. Winter Rocky Road. Winter because the chips are white, resembling snowballs or snow or sleet or whatever. Why don't we call it ice cream truckers? I was thinking <laughs> just Rocky's Road, like Rocky's plural. Rocky. Like the Rocky, Mount, Rocky Mountains, Rockies Road? Well, in your store you can call it that. I don't want a store. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Which was that? Oh, well, here go more of the marshmallows. I like that one. I like his, that's nice. They didn't hear it. Winter in the Rockies, right? Winter in the Rockies. That's what he suggested. I like it. Well, I don't it. like it. Oh. <laughs> and it says ice cream. Yeah. Well, in your store, you can call it what you want. Correct. 
<laughs> which will be wild. The only point is, you know, we don't use, uh, uh, never mind. Go ahead. We don't use dipping cabinets. So the ice cream isn't on display. Therefore, our menus, our menu is on the wall, as you saw. And it's very nice. But what we try to do in naming the flavors is to prevent the questions. Because when the line is out the door and people say, well, what's in the winter in the Rockies? You know, everyone's going to ask that. And if they have four of those flavors, oh, what's in this? What does that have? So, ooh. So we try to at least put something like wild cherry Snickers. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Oh, got it on me. Tastes like chocolate cream ice. Okay, let's see what we got. It's good. I can see lots of stuff. I see uh, marshmallows. I think I do too. What? that. We see marshmallows. Yeah. Bigger machine out there. This can sell. Yeah, I think so. I think we've determined it can be whatever you want to put in it. Right. Okay. Good job. Nicely done. Yes. <laughs> I think I'll have to take one of these home. Okay. At least let him try it and see if we want to carry it. Yeah. Well, we'll get it right in the freezer and put it in the corner. Yeah. Ah. I know that trick. <laughs> because you don't have a lot of hours. Right. After we try this, we're going to do our uh, questions answered segment. So I hope you have your questions ready. It's a great opportunity to ask uh, the experts. To, I'm supposed to do cheese, pumpkin cheesecake, then questions answered. A fourth one? Are we going to be able to fit that in before lunch? That's how it's always been. Two it's okay. Oh, we can. All right. I'm wrong. It's, what uh, are we Christi doing? We're going to do pump, uh, Christie's pumpkin cheesecake next. What time is it? Do you want me it? to rinse out the lemon ice? I already did. Okay. What time is well, it? Well, actually, it's very good. It's quarter to 11. Okay. So we're doing fine. So we'll, we'll do another flavor, then we'll have questions answered, and then we'll break for lunch. Whoa, what an agenda. Yes. The important part being the words break for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I have to try this. Look at that. You can't see it, but that's a marshmallow. Yeah. They're in there. How about that? That's delicious. Do you like it? I don't like the marshmallows. <laughs> but everything else is good. I'm not a fan of the marshmallows No, they're either. just kind of like, you know, chewy pieces of styrofoam in a delicious Italian ice. Well, you know, next time we could add styrofoam. I'm sorry to be so blunt. <laughs> I'm sorry? Next time we could add styrofoam and skip the middleman. It would taste the same. <laughs> it doesn't make that noise. Mm -hmm. And it's cheaper. Yeah. He doesn't give out his formulas. I wrote it down. I don't think so. Thank you very much. Did it, you have? Yeah, we have. Okay. Everybody else have one? Did you want one, Scott? Oops, sorry. I know my wife all bought it because it's Tiffany Blue. That was that was the big selling point. <laughs> He can't open her. Yeah, such a deal. Uh, no, I picked well, this out myself. Work? Is it okay? I, I, yeah. 
All, all my designer clothes That's are designed by me. Okay. So more rocky. The the um, I won't say who they were, but the Italians I like made them. fun of the way yeah. I dress for these classes. It's a good uh, they say relief. It's really tacky. Wears bright colors and stuff like that. Well, I figure that's who I am. It's you know I'm not going to wear a chef's outfit. You know that would be a little strange. Okay. Well, I don't got nothing else, so this is what I'm going to use. All right. I am not much of a talker or yacker. That's more Steve's category. Well, you're doing fine. <laughs> anyway. So the great thing about using these Jell-O pudding, instant pudding mixes is um, they add so much flavor to a lot of your um, flavors that you do make. Another big benefit, actually there's no dairy in here. So if you want to make a dairy-free, you can use these as well uh, with dairy-free mix and it pairs really well with the coconut background. So you remember how we talked about four quarts and then sometimes three quarts or three and a half? When you work with inclusions, like I'm gonna add pumpkin and stuff, you can get away with the three quarts. If you are working with just making a plain basic vanilla, you can do four quarts, because you're not adding anything else into the machine. So we're gonna stick with that. Is that jello or is it pudding? It's pudding, so you can pass the box around if you'd like. Oh. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you know where the easel went? Oh yeah, it's on top by the dashers. All right, so we have that in. And then, I'm gonna add these two. But we're gonna pull a Jeff. We're gonna start the dasher, get it turned on. So nothing special about that. You just bought that right at the supermarket? Yes, I did. Now, because that has pudding mix in it, I don't want to make pudding. Wow, the refrigeration went on already. Chrissy, is that the can that is just pumpkin or pumpkin spice? It's just pumpkin puree that you would use to make your, your pumpkin pie with. They I don't have a measuring spoon. Millennials love the pumpkin pie spice of everything. This is a, a very great flavor. Messy, but... You wouldn't think there would be much difference in uh, pumpkin, but uh, there's three different kinds. This is Libby's, and they also make one that's called pumpkin spice, and it just doesn't work well uh, compared to regular straight pumpkin. Uh, better to put the pumpkin spice in yourself. But the interesting thing uh, has to do with my two golden retrievers. Uh, we feed them pumpkin. Dog owners know that that's good for their digestive system. So Paula found that Libby's, I think it was Libby's, also makes an organic uh, pure uh, pumpkin puree. Well, we bought that, put it in their dish. They walked away. They wouldn't touch it. 
I mean, you, I, I know they're more hamburger and hot dog type of uh, animals, but uh, that's really going to an extreme. They wanted just plain old pumpkin. They didn't want any. They would not. We tried a couple times. They wouldn't touch the organic version of the pumpkin. So maybe they know something. I don't know. Does anybody have any questions about adding stuff to the machine, when to add it? Um, anything that I just did, I know it's pretty simple and easy. Just open a can, just plop it in there. I've done that with apple pie. You know, I've taken the apple pie and just cut it with a knife, chunk it up, and just taken a spoon and just plopped it into the machine. That's the best part about an Emory Thompson. And that's what's going to set you off from your competitors. So your competitors, if they're buying wholesale or they don't have an Emory Thompson, they're making a vanilla ice cream with cookies in it because they can't add the cookies to the machine. They can't add the apple pie to the machine. You can, so your flavor is an apple pie or a pumpkin spice. I helped put haagen in business and my father did Ben and & Jerry. And uh, they started off, Reuben Madison, his mother in the Bronx, with an Emory Thompson batch freezer to make haagen -Dazs. Uh, haagen -Dazs is still a great ice cream, but it's made on a machine that makes a thousand gallons an hour and the only thing it can do is make vanilla or uh, coffee extract, things like that. So when you buy Hagen, and they have at the end of this long tube a machine called a fruit feeder. And so it injects strawberries into the vanilla ice cream. So what they have when they make commercial ice cream is vanilla ice cream with strawberries in it. What our batch freezers do, because we're the only ones you can put whole nuts, cookies, candies in because of the strength and its openings. Uh, for every particle of the dairy blend, this, for every particle of this, there is a particle of strawberry right next to it because the strawberries went into the machine. That is always going to give you a much more intense flavor than a commercial ice cream ever could. So there is a huge difference between what's sold in the store and what you're making in your business. Any questions? No, it's we're just wait, we're just waiting to taste it. <laughs> it's really good. Anybody not a fit? Oh yes. <laughs> if you're doing it in a chest freezer, I would recommend it at least overnight. If you're doing it in a hardening cabinet, overnight as well. But you can get away with 12 hours because it'll bring it down to 25 below. The colder cold, cold is a natural preservative, so the colder the better. People talk about. Um, the, the consistency of ice cream. And uh, one person will say, oh, my, I, my machine makes it smoother than the other. If they're all making them in the same freezing time as us, the Italian machines are making it just as smooth as we are. Uh, where you run into trouble is when you are freezing the ice cream down. Uh, if you don't freeze it down fast, you're yeah, going to get additional crystals in the ice cream. It's gonna be a rougher texture. So it's where you harden the ice cream uh, that matters uh, the most. I mean, we're both going to make a great ice cream. Uh, we just do it in a machine that lasts 40 years, uh, and theirs doesn't last a fraction of that time. And that makes a difference when you're spending this kind of money. And the infinite overrun control, my invention, I'm the only one who's got that. Yes. Yes, uh, the lady right here had a question. Yes. So, can you speak up? Yeah, so when it comes to like scooping ice cream and thinking about how long to freeze it, is there a certain amount of time that you should freeze before you pour the frying spoon or is it hard or does it not matter because people start to catch it? The question that you, uh, that, uh, if you didn't hear it, was uh, what about uh, uh, the time of when you can scoop the ice cream? You could take this ice cream right out of here and serve it fresh in a dish. It won't hold up on a cone because it's not that thick yet. But it's kind of fun if you've got a nice uh, weekend, hot weekend, and you want to come up with some crazy uh, formula that's uh, got marshmallows in it, uh, you could make it fresh and serve it out as dish, and you could advertise. Everything's about advertising. You could say, be here between 11 and 1, and we're going to have a brand new secret formula that nobody's ever seen before. That's good marketing. You could do it right out of the machine. But in order to preserve the ice cream, you really needed to get down to a point where you couldn't, you couldn't scoop it with a hammer and chisel. Um, that's, that's the way you preserve the ice cream. That's the way you build up an inventory. Over in Italy, uh, when I was uh, there a couple of times, uh, they have gelaterias everywhere. And they make the ice cream, they take it right out of the machine, put it in the serving cabinet, and serve it. The problem is, 
uh, I walked into a, a gelateria and I wanted uh, a fruit of Bosco, which is a fancy name for mixed berries. Uh, so I order up my fruit of Bosco and they say, oh, I'm sorry, we ran out a half hour ago. Well, I wanted fruit of Bosco and you're out of it. But over there, there's another gelateria down the road. There's no brand loyalty. It, you know, the guy down the street has fruit of Bosco. Go there, um, which I did. But in the United States, uh, we have brand loyalty. We go to the ice cream parlor that we have chosen. Uh, in, in fact, so much, I could ask all of you, uh, where did you go to get ice cream when you were growing up? Where did your grandparents take you? Where did your parents take you? And everybody gets a big smile on their face because we all remember where we went. And the only way you can do that is to have an inventory of the ice cream. If I'm going to advertise mint chip, my favorite, I've got to have some in the serving cabinet, in the zero degrees, ready to go soon, and some at uh, 10 or 20 below. So I've got a, a rotating inventory so that I never run out. You, you, we went out to uh, Bonefish the other night, and they had um, pumpkin ravioli uh, with a certain kind of fish. It was 5.30 at night. We're old. We eat early. Uh, so it was 5.30 at night. There's nobody in the restaurant, and when uh, my wife goes to order it, uh, the waiter says, I'm sorry, we ran out. And I'm, there's only four people over there. You know, how did you run out? That really made that restaurant look bad. How can you run out of the special of the night? Yes, quarter to nine, I understand. I should have gotten here sooner. 5.30 at night, you have the same obligation. You have to have every flavor that you make uh, has got to be available. Otherwise, just real simple, take down the sign that says mint chip, you know, just peel it off the menu, and then when they say, where's the mint chip on the menu? Well, I'm sorry we ran out last night. We'll have some more tomorrow. We'll save some just for you. We're ready. Okay. I don't wait for the compressor to come off. I just go for it. Hear that rumbling? That's, that's ice building up on the walls. It'll go away. Isn't that such a pretty fall color? That is beautiful. If it was my store, my store, I would serve it with a dusting of pumpkin pie spice and a graham cracker in it. Nice. Yeah. But that, that's my store, Jeff. <laughs> if Christy had her store, you would eat, be eating one of her other flavors, which is pickle Italian ice. That was good. With a big old piece of bacon. Real crispy bacon sticking in. Everybody in the audience used the bacon as a spoon. And you can't go wrong with bacon. <laughs> he thought it was repulsive, but believe it or not, we did an audience shot. So if you go to YouTube and you look uh, and you type in Emory Thompson pickle ice or dill pickle ice, I can't remember, but put pickle in there. You'll find the video and they did an audience shot and everybody really truly did like it and they were using that bacon as a spoon well christy's husband works here as an engineer and uh he cooked the bacon and every piece was just real crispy and flat it, 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 you know you could you could be selling mud ice cream and it would sell because of the the bacon <laughs> well that so is pretty. a beautiful color it is pretty and it, the pudding mix uh, helps it make it a lot thicker than normal so you could run it at the homemade which is what I did and it'll be a lot thicker than traditionally um, if you want to run it at super premium you'll get a lot less overrun and of course it'll be nice and thick um, you guys will have to taste it and see what others what other suggestions you have to add to it I think it could have used a little more pumpkin pie spice but I didn't do what Jeff did and taste it before refrigeration I know. People hear that Christy's got a machine at home, they say, what a nice boss Steve is. He gives uh, Christy's family a CB200 to run in their, their home. But I, of course, had an ulterior motive. I'm a businessman. She is coming up with fantastic flavors, uh, including the pickle ice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you'll see Christy running two batches today, and I just run the, uh, the one because, uh, quite frankly, her flavors are better than mine. And this one, the color, if the color is any indication, it's going to be great. And if you're like Mr. Cannoli back there, Scott, he'll text me and go, I need an L-I-T uh, ice. Figure the formula. Oh, a Long Island iced tea? Yeah. yeah. Well, you put in a lot of alcohol and nothing else matters. Yeah. 
You could definitely get uh, quite a buzz off of it. It was really good, though. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, that's got a great flavor. Mm. You try it, Jeff? I'll get there. Very good. I think Everybody, graham crackers, what about putting graham crackers in it? I think graham crackers in it would be a great addition. Yeah. Or you could do the dusting and then, of course, the graham cracker on the side. You could also add some of the uh, uh, speckaloose. No, that's cookie butter. I wouldn't add that. Too much? In your store. Okay. In your store. <laughs> well, your store is doing better than my store. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still selling Sharknado Italian ice. And uh, mint chip. <laughs> and mint chip. Christy tasted my mint chip before I gave it to the crowd. And she eats it and she goes, well, I won't be needing, needing mouthwash for the next two months. <laughs> I've gotten a little heavily handed with the extract. When they said a quarter of a teaspoon, they actually meant it. You know, and yeah, everybody oh, knows, did. Those, you know, I'm like, Jeff, those recipes don't matter. You just use what you want. Well, it was awful. Pretty much. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's at the printers. So if you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to do questions answered next. That's the three of us sitting down and uh, answering questions that people in the audience are uh, asking us. And uh, we've been doing this for a while now, so you can go back and see other questions answered. Uh, plus, every Wednesday, uh, Christy and I do a 10-minute questions answered from uh, emails that have come in. So if you go to emerythompson.com, that's E-M-E-R-Y Thompson.com, you can sign up and uh, you'll get our uh, questions answered uh, video sent to you uh, every Wednesday. We try to keep it at a fast paced 10 minutes. I never know what Christie's questions are going to be. She doesn't know mine. Uh, so it, it makes for some interesting surprises. And it's questions that we wouldn't have thought of. Uh, and they come direct from you, our uh, customers and viewers. So uh, emerythompson.com, just sign in. And we'll send that to you automatically every Wednesday. So what do you guys think? Very good. Add anything, take anything yeah. away? Uh, graham more crackers? Cream cheese. More cream just, cheese? Just more cheesecake flavor. More spice. I like the homemade more texture. More yeah, it's, it's very good. It, it's, it's tasty, it's really nice. But I don't taste the cream cheese as strong as I'd like. That would make sense. I do like the graham cracker idea. Yeah. I think there's... um a company that makes inclusions like that to stay crunchy in the ice cream. That's the only downfall when you work with ice creams and you're using cereals or crunchy things. They tend to go a little soft if they've sat in there, you know, obviously overnight. Um, but I think there's a, a company that makes that. I read, I read it. I'll have to find it. To Maybe find they that. spray Kevlar on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not 100% natural. But <laughs> no, but it would serve the purpose. All right, I'm going to pack this and then we're going to do q &A. We're going to do questions and answers, so we'll be back with you in a minute. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. Welcome to Questions Answered. I'm Steve Thompson, President of Emory Thompson Machine. I'm Christy Brown, Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And I'm Jeff Marco. From Make It, uh, from... Mystic. Uh, Mystic Ices and Ice Cream Boot Camp. Right. Mystic Ice Cream Boot Camp. Yep. Uh, so we're going to answer questions from the audience that we have here today at our Make, Make It Fresh class. And I'm going to start off, uh, I want to tell you about uh, a convention that's coming up. The, uh, it's an ice cream, frozen dessert uh, ice cream convention. Uh, most conventions that you go to um, around the country are going to be a mishmash of uh, restaurants and uh, selling linens and uh, hot pockets frozen desserts and bed frames and soft ice cream and hard ice cream uh, mixed in there. So you're really getting a whole lot of stuff that you have no interest in whatsoever. Uh, this convention uh, is, it used to be called an acronym, NICRA, National Ice Cream Retailers Association. N-I-C-R-A. So their website, 
The old website, which is still in effect, is called NICRA.org. What this is is a convention that goes around the country. We have it once a year, and uh, we had it in Florida not too long ago. Uh, and this year it's going to be in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Texas, uh, technically uh, in Fort Worth. And it'll start on Sunday, November 6th. Mike, does that go for three or four days? It goes for three days, and it actually starts on Monday. Oh, it starts on Monday. Sorry, I would have gotten you there a day early. So uh, November 7th for three days. And, and this is the best thing you can do for your business. I get a lot of phone calls, a whole lot of phone calls, and so does Christy. And people are asking, uh, hey, I live in... Um, Oh, Amarillo, Texas, and I want to go see an Italian ice business, and I want to ask the guy how he makes his ices and uh, where he gets his flavors and what machine he uses. Well, we don't give out those names. Uh, yes, I'll name drop big companies like Bluebell and haagen and uh, Ben and Jerry uh, that everybody knows, and Briars and Hershey, people that we put into businesses, Ma and Pa businesses, and they grow. But if you've got a store, I'm not giving out your name because it's not fair, number one, for uh, me to be using you to sell my machines. And your attitude is going to be, oh, Steve's sending people into my store uh, so that they can steal my ideas. And I tried years ago to say, you're in Amarillo, and they're opening up in uh, uh, Hawaii. You know, don't worry about it. Well, that doesn't work. People just feel someone infringing, impinging on their business is, is none of their business. So uh, I, I know every other company gives out names. I don't do it. Uh, but that's why this uh, conference becomes so important, because these same people who won't give you the time of day uh, about how to make their Italian ice or, or their ice cream uh, or their dairy free uh, will go to this convention. And they're so proud of what they do. I don't, maybe it's the drinks with the little umbrellas in it, but they, uh, they literally spill their guts. I tell people, you see someone who wears, wears a badge and says old timer, that doesn't mean me. It means someone who's been to there for two years or more. And these are people who are in business, and you can walk up to them and say, hey, by the way, whose vanilla do you use? Um, how do you uh, make that uh, lemon ice of Steve Thompson's? Um, all these different questions, and they'll be thrilled to answer them to, for you. Uh, there will be booths there, all related to ice cream. Nobody's selling bed linens. Uh, um, or, or microwave ovens. It's going to be all to do with frozen desserts. So the, there's a lot of uh, companies that will be there, including us and my competitors. So you'll get real side-by-side -side comparisons. And I beg you to come to it because we do so well in side-by-side -side comparisons. Uh, but it's the best thing you can do. It's only once a year. And this, this year it's in Fort Worth. And uh, it'll be really, really worth your time. They have one day. I, uh, they can tell you what it is. You can either sign up for all the days and go to the meals and the conference meetings. You know, if uh, things like if an ice cream cone costs five dollars, how much should you charge for a banana split? Meetings like that. They're valuable, worthwhile meetings. But if you don't have the money or the time, you can go for a one-day ticket. Uh, and that'll have a certain much lower fee to it, and you get to come into the booth uh, for about five or six hours and walk around and see everybody and talk to everybody. So either way, it's great. NICRA.org is the way I know it. They're, the new name is something like North American Frozen Desserts, but I haven't learned it yet. And the best part of going is you walk around and there's free stuff. <laughs> Everybody's giving out free samples of stuff, not just pens and stuff. You're getting free food stuff in there. It's kind of cool. Well, yeah, Forbes Chocolates there, and they have little samples of their actual chocolate bars. Um, so, you know, going off of what Steve said, there will be people that have where you can get your cups, your spoons, uh, containers, where you can get your custom print things, your signages, uh, things like that. So it's very, very good and helpful, especially because you get to see somebody face to face and you can chit chat for a good 20 minutes and not realize it. And um, then they'll leave and come back again and, okay, I got about 15 more questions. So now you're going to spend another 30 minutes chatting with them. And no, we are not giving out uh, batch freezers and no. souvenirs. It's not because we're cheap, but I am. It's because we know you just can't get it on the airplane without them giving you a hassle. So I'm sorry. We will have bags. <laughs> We will have bags. We will have bags. I have a 53-foot trail. 
Uh, one person in the audience a little while ago asked about um, the uh, adding alcohol to ice cream. Uh, yes, sir. I think you would. Yeah. Oh, you want to answer the question? Go ahead. What? What's the question? Never mind. You just continue. You thought you were <laughs> No, I was just. I, I was wondering who who was it that asked about putting alcohol in oh, ice cream? You? That was me. It was you. Okay. Uh, what was the question again? Uh, how much alcohol would you put in to uh, the batch freezer? Because you know alcohol doesn't freeze. Mm -hmm. To uh, get that consistency and being able to freeze is. Is there some amount of alcohol you can put in there? I see absolute strong and triple sec. Mm -hmm. Both don't freeze. Right. So how much would you put in there to make sure it does freeze, or are you just looking for that soft consistency, kind of like a sorbet or a shag nice? Okay, well, first off, and then I'll turn it over to uh, everyone else. Um, uh, alcohol does not freeze. I think the freezing point is somewhere around minus 270 degrees and nothing goes that cold. Uh, but if you've got a strong enough machine with a strong enough freezing capacity, which is the Emory Thompson, and I think we're the only ones you can do this successfully, we put alcohol right into the machine. And it doesn't freeze. It stays in suspension in the ice cream. So it will run a little softer than uh, regular ice cream will. Uh, but with the, what you do is uh, in your serving cabinet or your storage freezer, it's a big box and there's Freon lines running around it. So where I'm sitting at the center of the box, the box might be five below, but at the corners, it could be 10 below. So you take your alcohol ice creams and you put them in the four corners of the box and they'll, the alcohol will stay nicely in suspension. Um, so that's uh, what you do about that, but uh, no, it, it will never freeze. Um, I will, and I'll let Christy talk about how much putting in, and Jeff too, um, but I will tell you, you can overdo it. We got some grain alcohol in here once, 151 proof grain alcohol. The guy made this still up in Tennessee. <laughs> and we put it into the ice cream, and we put a little too much in, so much so that the ice cream always remained soft. But the people who tasted it, I watched them, and every time they took a taste of it, they went <gasps> like that because there was so much alcohol in the ice cream that it, it, it caught your breath. And that does you no good at all. I'm trying to sell rum raisin ice cream, and if the, uh, that's the IRS, they want to know about my uh, <laughs> using alcohol in ice cream. Um, the, um, if you use too much, all you're doing is putting an alcohol in for alcohol's sake. It's got to add to the flavor, just like mint extract or chocolate chip. Uh, go overboard, and, and people actually uh, won't like it. The face that he made is the face that I made on that mint chip ice. <laughs> <laughs> How much uh, alcohol do you use, Jeff? <clears throat> oh. Well, In I'll words... speak a, about it a little bit. So the lower the proof, the more alcohol you can add. An example, I'm not super familiar with working with um, alcohol with ice cream, so I'm going to leave that to Jeff. But when you do with ices, I'm very, I love that, hands down. Um, so I like a bottle of wine. I make a very, very, very wine sorbet. I use an entire bottle of wine and then the equal amounts of water with sugar and fruit. Uh, obviously, wine is a lower proof. In which I, machine? The CB350. Okay. If I am try to do that with that absolute citron, no, that's not going to happen. It's too high of a proof. Um, so it's just learning the balance. Now, that is when I do my taste testing. Uh, like you guys all know, I have the CB200. So I'll start with a few ounces, and then I'll taste it. Because you can always add more, but you can't take back. Right. So I'll give it a taste. And I, if I know I can't taste it, it's definitely going to freeze. So once I start to taste it and how strong it tastes, um, that's kind of my, my clue to kind of that's really good where we're at. And then, of course, I'll run it, let it freeze, and then I'll know at that point, too, it's taken 18 minutes to freeze. Okay, I definitely put too much alcohol. For the most part, what you'll find you're going to use are liqueurs, which are lower alcohol concentrate mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, we use a lot of Baileys. We use Kahlua, Amaretto, and those are all 15%. They're, they're nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can use anywhere between in a... In a 24 quart, which is what I use, we use anywhere between a bottle and a half, a, a 750 and a half, or Bailey's, we use uh, two 175s. Okay. Because Bailey's is not only a liqueur, but it's got all that cream going on. Uh, 
basically, what I try to do is get the flavor into the ice cream. I'm not concerned with how much alcohol, more or less. It doesn't matter. I want the flavor in there. Mm -hmm. There are some ice creams like our rum raisin. Now that's rum. You know, that's, that's the goods. Yeah. And we use uh, a half a gallon uh, of rum. But there again, we soak the raisins for about three or four days so they absorb the rum. When you put the, the half gallon in a bucket of rum and then add the raisins to it, when you come back in three days, there's no rum in there. The raisins absorb it all. So when people taste the ice cream, they're getting the flavor and they're getting a pop when they pop the raisins in their mouth. So, but that's about the most uh, uh, alcohol of any of the ice creams would be rum raisin. Um, we don't use 151, we don't need yeah. to. And we use Caribbean rum, which is uh, a nice flavor. Um, but I wouldn't, con I wouldn't concern myself with it because for the most part you'll be using liqueurs. We use right. peach schnapps, wild cherry liqueur, Kahlua, Amaretto, Baileys, those things. And they're not high alcohol. Yeah, yeah well, and if you work with ices, and I, that's all I use is hard liquor. I hardly use any liqueurs. Um, you got to stick with ounces. <laughs> no whole bottles. <laughs> One of my customers wrote uh, last week, and she was insistent that she wanted to know how much vodka to put into a CB350. And I, I, I couldn't help myself. I kept saying, why bother? Uh, vodka really doesn't have any taste to it. It's not improving the, any product that you're putting it into. It's just adding alcohol for the sake of it. Now, like Jeff said about the rum raisin or a bourbon vanilla. A good Kentucky bourbon uh, into a vanilla ice cream is really going to be a nice taste. So uh, both Christy and, and Jeff's points really hone in on it. You're doing it for the flavor. You're not doing it just for the sake of calling it boozy ice cream. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, really where you make money is having it on your menu. You know, and of course the sign that's going to make you a lot of money is over 21. And we have that because you need to do that. You can't right. sell it to kids. So when you have over 21 and you put Bailey's, Kahlua, um, you know, Amaretto chip and all these things, that's a hook. And that's what's going to get people talking about your place uh, and bringing them back with their friends because it's a hook. Right. I mean, it's delicious ice cream, mm -hmm. but I, maybe you'd go so far as say it's a gimmick, uh, but you're really doing it but the word spreads pretty good on it. Okay. So question to echo that. For permitting purposes, because it's an ingredient, do you need alcohol permits for an alcoholic ice cream? <laughs> no. Uh, not, you have to check with your individual yeah. state. But they're all going to have um, a maximum that you can put in. So what you want to do is have a friend of a friend call the state <laughs> and say, what is the maximum alcohol that I can put in and get that number and then when the inspector comes and they say well how much alcohol did you use in this and he knows that the state limit might be you know 0.7 uh, your answer of course is 0.6 you're not going to break the law so you're always going to say 0.6 so it's, it's, it's really that simple you don't need a license um, and, and it's, it's just that simple. It's become very more prevalent than it used to be. I mentioned you, during the class earlier. You don't need a license unless you go to City Hall and ask if you need a license. Exactly. That's not the point I'm trying to get to. <laughs> Have the friend of the well, friend call. Didn't I also hear, too, is if you try to make it your Bailey's ice cream into a milkshake, that because it's got a straw in it, that is when you do, right? No? I heard that, that they declared it a mixed drink. Oh, right. but that may be urban legend. Oh. It's urban legend. Because I think those are the kind of tricks of the trade that we do want to understand. Like if you have a straw in it or if you don't, the type of cup or things like that. So we can research that offline. But I think that's probably a bigger, mm -hmm. from the paperwork side, making sure we understand. You can also call here. Um, we have, uh, for 118 years, we have a lot of contacts in the industry. All my friends who we were all driving around Long Island. There's the IRS again. Um, <laughs> We were driving around Long Island, Connecticut, New York, and Brooklyn, and now we're all uh, senior vice presidents, presidents, CEOs of our companies. So when you call us, we can direct you to someone, if we don't know the answer, someone who does. Uh, we won't give you an answer just 
to answer the question. We'll make sure that uh, we're, we're certain on it. Question? No? Any questions? Surely we do. Here we go. I got a question with regards to Italian ice. Um, I'm originally from New England, and in New England we used to call, um, well. Flush. No, we called it. Uh, Water ice? Again. Grenade. Lemonade. You just call it lemonade. Yes, lemonade. Just lemonade. Yeah. And um, as I started moving further south, they would call it differently. I've been in Philadelphia, they had water ice. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Italian ice was popular up north too. So in order to keep the consistency there with the Italian ice with, uh, freezing, or what is Scott? the temperature normally set at? Is it, is it going to be different from the ice cream? That's two different questions, yes. Um, ice cream is usually scooped around 6 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's, that's a good scooping temperature. Um, the Italian ice is, that I scoop at so that I can put it into a dish is 16 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, give or take, you know, a degree or so. But it's warmer, so you need a separate cabinet for uh, the Italian ice. Uh, or there's, a, you can look at my website uh, and the videos or call me. There's a device called Inkbird, and it's a thermostat that you can put in any ice cream freezer and adjust the temperature upwards for 35 bucks. Um, but the different products, uh, your frozen lemonade up in uh, Massachusetts and Rhode Island um, is, uh, I, I, don't, I don't love it. I think it's very lacking in flavor. Um, but it's a big seller. I sell a lot of machines up there. Uh, but uh, in a 24 quart machine, the big one behind my shoulder, it would be um, six pounds of sugar in the formula. That's very low. And that gives it that uh, icy, slushy, not much flavor consistency. You drive down uh, I-95 to New York, and that sugar content goes up to seven. And we have New York Italian ice at seven pounds, and it's got texture to it. Then you go down to Philadelphia, and the name changes to water ice, uh, or water ice, and uh, it's eight pounds of sugar. And it's smoother and creamier. So all up and down the East Coast, all those products are basically Italian ice, but the sugar content um, changes the texture and the flavor. More sugar. People call up and they say, you know, my lemon ice doesn't have an enough flavor in it. How much lemon are you using? Oh, I'm using a full quart. Uh, okay, well, the lemon's good. Try upping your sugar by a half a pound uh, and see if the flavor doesn't improve. Because sugar doesn't necessarily make it sweeter at a half pound level or even maybe a pound but it does make it uh, more uh, tart or more, whatever your flavor is, more mango-y, <laughs> if there's such a word. And that's all in our videos. Those are things we can help you with. I've been making uh, ices for uh, over 48 years. And uh, so I, I know all of it, and I wasn't allowed to talk about all of it uh, back when I was in New York because it wasn't safe, <laughs> but now I can. Anyone else? Okay, well then I guess we'll break for lunch and uh, we'll, we'll bring that in and then we're gonna come back here and uh, make some more ices and ice cream. In case you haven't had enough. Yeah, yeah, it's usually around this point. When we first convened in the morning, I forgot to ask you, I said, like, hey, who wants ice cream? Eric goes, yeah! And, and, and then right about after lunch, who wants ice cream? Yeah, and then, you know, we got time for one more flavor. Anybody want uh, another ice cream? Uh, I, I think I hear my cat calling me. I'm sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> so we understand. Uh, do be careful when you're running your own store because every time you take a taste of something, that's an ounce of product. And I'm gonna ask you the really insulting question. Did you mean to eat 32 ounces of ice cream today? And you go, I didn't do that. Oh yes, you did. You, you took a spoonful of each one. So you'll see me only taking a little tiny taste. I, I learned the hard way. <laughs> so here comes lunch, and uh, we'll get everything together for you. Uh, they know what we're making. I know. The, uh, <laughs> I know. The, I know. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, we're going to make uh, wild cherry Snickers. Snickers, number one candy bar in the world. Cherry, number one flavor in the world. So I thought, I just two weeks, maybe a month ago, I was playing around in the kitchen, and I thought about combining them. And I did, 
and uh, it, it became a, a bestseller overnight. Uh, it, people just, and of course, if you see the name on the menu board, Wild Cherry Snickers, you know, you got to have it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our basic Snickers, and then we're going to add crushed maraschino cherries to it to make a puree. There'll still be little pieces in there, but as most of you know, I don't care what it looks like. I, all I care about is what it tastes like. So I ground up uh, the Snickers bars, and we have a gallon of ground up Snickers bars. We'll infuse that into our mix. I need another bladder. Uh, we'll infuse that into the mix, and then the ice cream will actually taste like Snickers rather than make vanilla ice cream and put pieces of Snickers in it, uh, which is what you get everywhere else. Uh, that's not going to cut it. Uh, in order to make our Snickers really pop, uh, what's in Snickers? Well, there's peanuts in Snickers, so I'm going to add more peanuts. And there's caramel in Snickers, so I'm going to add more caramel, just to make it better than anybody else can ever make it. Uh, and the cherries, these are, if you get a stem, I bought the stem, no stem cherries, but you never know. Uh, so we're going to crush those up in the Ninja with a little cherry juice so that it creates a, uh, you know, a thing, you know? So we'll put some of these in here. Where did you get those? What? Where did you get those? Restaurant Depot. What a friend I am. I'm giving you my bladder. <laughs> I'll warn you, she likes to get up twice in the night. Oh, they're in. You <laughs> left the door open. All right, let's go. Come on, Stella. Come on, lead the way. I'm just wiping excess pumpkin cheesecake. Okay, cherry uh, uh, puree, I guess? Yeah. Okay, cherry puree. And uh, let's see. Did you mention that that's a ninja? What? Did you mention that that's a ninja? Uh, I'm, everyone in my class, but the ninja. It's because of this. Uh, no, nothing else works like this. I started business, and I thought I was ahead of the game. I had a Vitamix. $560 Vitamix, and I brought it to the store. I said, well, now we don't have to worry about anything. And it's, that's junk. I sold it for $50, <laughs> the Vitamix, because I didn't need I wasn't using it. This, these run about $80, and there's nothing like it. Just be very careful with this, because it's very easy to slice your finger. Uh, everybody does it. Uh, but they are the best, Ninja. I wish uh, they knew how much I sell for them. Yeah, we don't sell them, but uh, if it makes it easier in the store, and it certainly does, they're great. Oh, they're terrific. Now, uh, the nuts that we're going to add, um, leave it to my wife. She buys the cheap ones, uh, so they're already broken up, uh, which in this case works better. Um, normally, I buy the good nuts, and they're whole nuts, you know, planters. Um, and then I have to break them up somehow. These, <laughs> uh, she's so cheap. Uh, I, I said she's so sweet. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to put a not all of a bladder because the recipe calls for six quarts of ground Snickers, and we have four. So I'm going to adapt it a little bit. But the recipe is six quarts of this stuff. And we didn't, uh, she's so sweet. She didn't get enough. 
Uh, but that's okay. Uh, there'll be plenty of ice cream here. But it just means that I'm going to adapt it a little bit. If it calls for six and I have four, that's two-thirds, right? So two-thirds of ten quarts is what? 66.5, right? 66.6, .6 actually. So it's two-thirds of that. So we'll see if we can eyeball it, because I don't feel like measuring. So we'll do that. We'll put in two-thirds or three-quarters, about. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. And uh, I'm sure you want to ask, this is 10% mix. Uh, it comes in 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and some insane people put 22. Uh, but I've always used 10, and I like 10. What do you think? More, less? That's good? Okay. <laughs> like they know. <laughs> All right. Uh, what order do you put stuff in? Whatever order you want. Well, not really. Uh, if you want to make your life a little easier, put in stuff that, because you know this is going to stick to the inside here and create a little mess, and you know this is going to wash it down. So just, it's not that important, but it's what you'll do. You'll... You'll, like, I wouldn't put this in last because this is going to stick to all the walls of the spout. So, you know, just if you have a bottle of something, use that last. It washes the whole thing down. All right. I, uh, well, I guess we'll use this. Ah, why not use this? Perfect. Perfect. So we'll put it on so that as we're adding this, here's what we want to happen. You see this? Imagine if you just put this in the machine. What you're going to get is vanilla ice cream with chunks of Snickers, and it won't taste like Snickers. So years and years ago, maybe 15 years ago, I came up with an idea, and it has since worked very well where whatever we want to do, whether it's M&M's, Snickers, Milky Way, whatever you want, cut them into bite-sized pieces and freeze them overnight. And then put them in the Ninja. The goal is to get as fine a powder as you can. Uh, and what's going to happen is all this cream and this beating up in the machine at 234 revolutions a minute I'll let this go a little longer. I want the flavor to hit every piece of cream. And then you'll taste Snickers bars in the cream, in the ice cream. Get it? Yeah. Oh. Ooh. There we go. Good. Oh, good crowd. I want to tell you, you know. All right. So we'll start her up. <laughs> And now this is a lengthy process. This takes a while, because there's a lot of it. <laughs> so Steve can actually entertain you while I'm doing this. Oh, this is quite entertaining, Jeff. Well, someone has to do it. I know. Mm -hmm. Lip. Yeah, most likely. It's high mineral content, um, but if there's a smell in it.
Okay, uh, we'll add, where's that one quart container I just did? Oh, here? dang it, I did it to you again. What are you doing? Well, I'm cleaning up. <laughs> here, this, well, is, this is dry. Okay. <laughs> All right, now we'll add some peanuts and caramel. Oh, that's just about right. And then we'll add the uh, 16, coincidentally enough, which is perfect, half a quart. Uh, this is, uh, let's see. We'll add, uh, uh, by the way, lion's caramel is great. Uh, lion's caramel, oh boy, that's good stuff. So we'll add, yeah, we'll add about a half of this, which is also about a quart. And then we'll add a quart of this. And what's left to do? Of course. Ooh, clear spoons. Shortage issues. Little more cherry. But what are you going to do with it? What was the total amount of cherry that went in there? What? What was the total amount of cherry that you um, put in? The total amount of cherries will be three and a half pounds because we're going to use those too. Those will be the ones we put in whole. This is going to be ridiculously good. Anything else? Just some whole cherries. I figure we'll add some whole cherries after it thickens a little bit, so we'll get that working in there. So we good? Are we good? Okay, this should be pretty good. Who makes it? Hartley's. Hartley's? Hartley's. Uh, they make uh, a whole line of flavored syrups, and I've always used them. I think they're good. When we make creamsicle ice cream, we use the orange, uh, and we have to make a, uh, a really disgusting flavor because of where we're located. We have to make cotton candy and bubble gum, uh, which, please, don't make it. It's vile. It's awful. But Hartley's is the way to do it. Uh, you just add Hartley's and the cream and you got it. And it's the taste is just like it. But ugh, it's really nasty stuff. Okay, I'm saving this one piece for the display purpose on the serving. <laughs> uh, and I'll save a cherry too, so... We'll, we'll present it. We'll present it. Okay? We're good? Good. That's a good thing that we, you know. Okay, there it is. Fired up and ready. Any questions about it?
Go ahead. Uh, the food in there? Yeah, so when you keep turning around and pushing it down with the spoon, are we going to be able to see what happens? No, like? that's, a, that's a closely guarded secret. <laughs> all it is is what I put in, and you push it down, that's all. Does that include flavor or something, or are you just doing it just for the food? He's just pushing it down into the hole. Um, when you taste it before, does it taste almost the same when it's completed, or what do you, what do you, what do you taste? It Good question. Good question here. When you taste it initially, does it taste the same as when it's finished? No, no of course not. Uh, but after you make several batches of ice cream, you'll know what you like. The converse is really where you're looking. If it doesn't taste good in there, then it's going to taste worse as ice cream. So that's when you have to amend it. Uh, for the most part, in this particular ice cream, what I'm tasting for is, remember you have Snickers and you have cherry, and you want a nice blend. You don't want one to dominate because that wouldn't be good in the ice cream. You want it to be a, a nice mix of cherry and Snickers. Uh, but let's say you're making, pick another flavor, uh, Oreo cookie. Let's say you're making Oreo cookie. When you taste it, when I taste it, what I'm tasting for, is there enough Oreos in here? That's all I care about. Uh, I, maximum flavor. Uh, I want roll your eyes back in your head flavor, you know, when people taste it. Like where, when she tasted the coconut the other day, her eyes went back in her head because it was unbelievable. And that's what I'm after. Because there's a lot of ice cream stores out there and there's the supermarket. So everything's fighting against you. So you have to be known as selling the world's best ice cream. And uh, they can now, you can make, you, can, you feel confident you can make the world's best ice cream? Of course, because you, you know, you learn. You learn how to do it. But flavor first. And to get back to your original question, what are you tasting for? I'm tasting for flavor, or if I'm combining things, dominance. We don't make Oreo cookie ice cream. We make Oreo crunch, which is a combination of Nestle's crunch and Oreo cookie, just to be different. So when I make it, I want to taste it and make sure, does it need more Nestle crunch? Does it need more Oreo? because you want to, there's no sense putting Nestle Crunch in if you're putting so much Oreo that you won't even taste the Nestle Crunch. You're wasting your money. So I just look for a balance uh, and a lot of flavor. Long-winded question, right? <laughs> answer rather. <laughs> Any other questions? Does the flavor change? Any other questions? What? Does the flavor change? Different schools of thought there. Steve maintains that the flavor will bloom the next day. In, in my world, that's hogwash. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, when you were kids growing up and you had the half gallon in front of you, what did you go for first? The hard frozen stuff in the middle? No, you went for what's melting on the outside. We all did it. And then eventually we would mush that up and get, ooh, ooh. So, uh, here he comes. You see, <laughs> you see, yeah, and he did it secretively. He went, okay, I guess I'll show this young whippersnapper. Go, go ahead, continue. No, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> well, what you just described was what we physically do with the ice cream. Yes, we do like to go around the edge. I do that every night at 10 o'clock, I leave my Blue Bell coffee ice cream out and I wait till it softens and you go around the edge. Jeff is right. That's a temperature thing. What I'm talking about is a flavor thing. How many of you had grandmothers who made homemade soup and told you it'll be better the next day? And that's absolutely true. No, I guess he didn't grow up around Italians. What would he know? 
So uh, <laughs> lots of things are better the next day because the flavor intensifies. In my and mind, the ice cream will never, ever, ever taste as good as it does when it first comes out of that machine. It'll never be any better than that. That's the best. Um, I have people in this class who I'll make a simple vanilla ice cream and I'll use a lot of vanilla and I'll hand it out to you and you'll think to yourself, it's really nice, but it's kind of bland. And that vanilla flavor will bloom overnight. It's also, you know, every, everybody always says, I've heard this for 50 years, people say, oh, there's nothing better than when it first comes out of the machine. <laughs> well, you just made it and it's also free and you can also eat all you want. But if you want to really get down to a taste profile, a lot of people tell you many, many foods taste better the next day. Uh, and, and that's absolutely true. That's, this is what the dairy scientists say at Penn State and other places. Uh, but Jeff's not wrong in the really small world of saying that if you scoop around the edge and it's soft, yeah, that's the best part. If I have a choice at 10 a night of scooping around the edge or digging into the hard part, yeah, I'll go for around the edge. And that because will then I replicate can eat four times as much and it really doesn't machine. look bad. Yeah. Huh? What? What? I said doing that will replicate what first comes out of the machine. No, it's just it's just oh. a, it's a temperature thing. It's not a taste thing. Uh, hang on. Okay. <laughs> Where's my sledgehammer? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the uh, the presentation Bless you. bowl? What that you gave to uh, I didn't give anybody anything. Somebody got it. The cinnamon? Yeah, where's that bowl? Or just get a bowl. I wouldn't say so that they're all this. US made. I think they probably source them from a lot of places. A company like mine is very rare that is using USA, all USA parts. I'd I'd say there's probably Chinese parts in there, there's probably parts from Indonesia, Korea, all sorts of places. Uh, but as far as best on the market. Uh, I'd say this is it. This is the very best on the market. Ah, uh, perfecto. South Carolina. Do you have people that service? So you use them in South Carolina? Okay, so the question is, you didn't hear it on the microphone because he's up close. Um, the first thing to do about service is first, you won't believe it until you've owned it 40 years that nothing goes wrong with an Emory Thompson. Uh, but after we get past that, usually it's going to be something you've done wrong. That's why I take uh, questions Sunday nights at 8.30, quarter to 9. Nobody else in the industry does, and no CEO that I know even takes questions. Uh, you, you can't call up the president uh, of Stolting uh, or Bravo or any of the other companies and get them on the phone. You can get me on the phone. Uh, you know, that's got to be worth something. Uh, because I've been doing this longer than they have. Uh, but 99% of the questions that Christy and I take, and Mike takes, Mike's running the board, he does all the, uh, the bulk of questions, uh, are simple things that you've done wrong. Uh, and uh, I always have a magic question that I ask. I say, when did it last run right? Well, it ran right five minutes ago when I was making uh, lemon ice. Okay, so here, let me go through that progression real quick. What are you making now? I'm making cherry ice. And what happened? The machine locked up and stopped. Okay, I, I kind of know where it is. I say, okay, you, like go over and taste it. Tell you, taste the cherry ice, what's it taste like? And you come back and you say, oh, it tastes like cherry juice and water. Yeah, I know, because your machine ran fine 10 minutes ago. Your machine ran fine for the last 17 years. And all of a sudden now, it doesn't work and you say the product's lousy. You left the sugar out. Now, if that had been another company, it would have shut the machine down. Any other company, they'd, you'd call them up and they'd say, you call up Electrofreeze, and they say, oh yeah, this is Saturday night, we can have someone out there uh, Monday by five o'clock. They come, uh, you tell them what happened, they change the expansion valve, 500 bucks. They then make four batches of product with you uh, seeing how it is and it runs perfectly because they're watching you put the sugar in and what's your answer you say wow I was only down for two days and I only lost three thousand dollars in sales over the weekend but they got me up and running and it only cost me a thousand bucks if you'd called Steve Thompson or Christy Brown or Mike McDonald 
you would have been up in about four minutes and, and, the, and the price would have been zero. So always call us first. If Mike determines that it's going to need someone, he has a host of names all over the country that we use and we bring in. We don't have uh, authorized Emory Thompson trucks out there. They'd starve to death. You know, we might get we might get 10 calls a day out of uh, what are we up to? 30. Where'd Christy go? What are we up to now, Christy? 39,000 machines in the world. Are we there yet? 39.54. Yeah. 39,054 machines and Mike gets a few calls a day. I'd say that's a pretty good track record, but the answer is always call us. You know, if the, if the switch breaks and we don't think that you, you're capable of popping it out and popping in a new one, uh, we'll either call someone in or we'll tell you to call your electrician, send the part overnight because we have it in stock, and there you go. We have the best service network of anyone in the industry because we build the best machine in the industry. But thank you for the, ch uh, the question, and uh, that $20 I promised you, I'll give you on the way out. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's going on? I thought it was boring, Steve. <laughs> Deflation. <laughs> Look at that. feel my glucose level going up as I look at it. <laughs> I'm going to take a small taste anyway. What the hell? That's why I've got a pump. <laughs> so here's our, uh, our display. Nice. Nice color. And then a couple of cherries and yeah. a Snickers bar. All right. All right. And Very good. Spoon. <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, anybody idea. want that? Yes. Who? Oh, oh give it to Mike. Mike, Mike he wants it. <laughs> Mike, there you go, Mike. Anything. Well, I'll put your cup back, Mike. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that was I said Definitely. to Mike, I said to Mike, what are we going to do with all this ice cream? He said, don't worry. <laughs> Jeff and I like to argue about everything under the sun, but one thing we never argue about is he does make fabulous ice cream. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of this hanging around. This is good. Yeah, you like it? It won't hang around for long. <laughs> no, it's a good combination. It's very good. That is super yeah, that's right, Mike. Wow, too bad you all can't have any. We're going to keep it. <laughs> but trust us, it was good. Yep, freezer. What? Yeah. You know that certain covers don't fit on certain. It's the polyprop. See, these are clear. Yes. You have to get the ones that fit. What a stupid. Mm. See, this is frosted. This will fit. See? Yeah, it sure did. Because of the pla type of plastic? Yeah, it's polypropylene and polystyrene. And the. Uh, no way. Right. But this one will That'll work. Fit That'll work. That fits because it's. Yeah, this will work. Not too. clear. Yeah, right? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, okay? Christy, are you taking over now? Uh, yep. Okay. Well, somewhat. I mean... You're up. Yeah. <laughs> How much sugar do I? Oh, we have to pack that out. I don't need that. They do. Yeah, they I'll, do. I'll give it to them and they can do it. All right. If you'll hand those down the line. It says two pounds of sugar, right? Um, 
Cranberry Cosmo? Yeah. yeah. Two pounds of sugar. Okay. Jeff, are you taking off for Daytona Beach? Nothing escapes you. <laughs> no, I want you to come up and uh, so we can say thank you. And, and don't walk off with my microphone again. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cost a thousand bucks. <laughs> Everybody, let's give a hand to Jeff for a fantastic job. Right. Thank you. I find myself in the car driving home. So, Steve, what did you think today? <laughs> How'd you like when I, uh, you know, sent that helicopter after you? Right, right. <laughs> uh, so remember, if you were at the class, uh, and uh, many of you were, feel free to email me. Let me know what's going on. The group picture will be on the site, uh, the private page, anytime now. Uh, and <laughs> you go ahead. And I'll there's another class. Uh, January is our next class. January 9th, if uh, you didn't hear about it, Jeff runs a uh, two-day boot camp, which is unlike this class. It's hands-on. You'll be making the ice cream. He'll be sitting in a bark -a lounger, bark -a lounging out orders. <laughs> Not a bark -a lounger, <laughs> but I do sit down, right? <laughs> And then Jeff also has a uh, fantastic uh, ice cream book uh, that has all his flavors in it. So you can contact Jeff. Uh, he, he failed uh, spelling in uh, grade school, so uh, it, the email address is X hippie, but hippie spelled wrong. You know so the be origin careful. Of that, by the way? No. The origin of that is uh, when AOL first came out in the late 90s, I uh, thought. My license, I, I thought, let's get X hippie because that's my life. But it was taken already. X H I P P I E was taken, and X H I P P Y was taken. So there was nothing else left. And then I went to the Motor Vehicle Bureau, and I wanted a license plate indicative of that. And the same thing happened. I couldn't get those. That's why it's E E. And Damn, my whole life has been E-E-H-I-P-P-E-E. -E. -E -E. But the most amazing thing, which he doesn't understand, so don't tell him, do you know anybody else who has AOL? <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. All right, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I use that for the junk. <laughs> yeah. Right, AOL for the spam. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jeff. That was a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. I have a great time here. We'll see you in January. You bet. Or before. Okay. So. There you go, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, Cranberry Cosmo, uh, if you saw me in the background, I did my triple sec, which it's the orange flavor uh, triple sec, and then the absolute uh, citron which is a citrus vodka, and then fresh squeezed lemon juice. Steve and I use the same lemons. Once again, it's liqueurs uh, in most of the stuff we use. All right. Make sure my gate is closed, which it is not. Christy, is the, the vodka a lower uh, no. proof? No, or is that this, full, is, this is uh, full strength. 40%. It's high test. Okay. Proof. The good stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have white shoes. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, how do I come up with my Italian ice flavors or ice cream flavors? My ice cream flavors, believe it or not, I come up with from family recipes. Uh, my mom was a baker. She used to run 300 bakeries. So I have a lot of recipes from her. So I take those desserts and turn them into ice cream. Jeff, of course, you know, he just sits there and wonders and comes up with random things. My Italian ices, I come up with from mixed drinks. Uh, I have two bars at my house. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Got one inside and one outside. Uh, but it's a mixed drink. And then you just have to come up with your formula ratios. And uh, like we had mentioned before, you add a little couple ounces, taste test it, and see and, see and go from there. It's really true because 
one of the books that I have found. Anyway, any questions about what I did, adding anything into it, working with what we call boozy ice? Uh, Steve has a good speak on that about how uh, people go from infused alcohol to call it boozy ice. You want to tell them about that? I did earlier this oh, morning, but wow. it's just a fun sounding name. It is, it <laughs> is. I didn't need to. I'm using a juice cocktail. Uh, whenever I work with juices, I don't ever add water. So if you want to make an orange Italian ice, I like to buy the Simply Orange Juice brand with a high pulp, uh, and I don't add any water with that. If I am going to do a Cranberry Cosmo, just straight cranberry juice. I have done cranberry and orange juice, and those two flavors go really well, and it comes kind of like a, a pink, almost like the color of your shirt. It's a very, very, very great flavor. Um, if you buy, I forgot the brand of it, but they come in cartons in the refrigerated section, those juices, uh, those you don't have to use water if you're going to make Italian ice with it, just your sugar in that. Um, there are certain juices that are very, very, very sweet and already have a lot of sugar. So the rule of thumb with the CB350 is always adding two pounds of sugar. Sometimes when you're working with a very high sugary juice, you don't need that. So you can cut it back down to a pound and a half. But I wouldn't go any less than that because the machine still needs something to freeze. So that way you have a really nice scooping. Did you talk to them about the texture and scooping about more sugar, less sugar? In the Italian ice, yeah. yes. You did? You already did talk about it? Uh, the, the more sugar you yeah. add, the okay. smoother it is. Well, then I'm out. No, you're not. I got nothing. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> so because it has alcohol, sugar, plus the juice, and it sat for a little bit, it's going to take probably 15-ish minutes to freeze. If I was to do batches back to back to back to back because the cylinder is very cold, your batch times your first run of the day, so this is the first batch, it's going to take a little while longer. If I was to do another one after that, it's going to take a couple minutes less because the cylinder is already cold. So a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll wander off for 15 minutes because their first batch took that long. No, 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 your second batch won't take that long. So always keep that in mind too. Yes? Well, I go from this one because I do this at home on this one. So whatever I put in this, I double it for that. Exactly. And then, exactly. So take that one and then double it for the 12 quart. And then you're going to triple it for this one. So if I know it works in this one, I know it'll work in that one. I have a question about baking Okay. Uh, and freezing time on our machine. When you are baking at home and a, a cake and a recipe says uh, it takes 25 minutes at 350, do you at 25 minutes when the timer goes off, do you just take it out of the oven? Mm -hmm. Why not? The, isn't that what the instructions said? No. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean you go by it. So what do you do? I wait till it's done. Then I mean, do, I do, you, do, do you check it? Where are you getting at, Steve? <laughs> so isn't that the, is that what you're doing here? Is you're, you're checking it even though your, your timing is close? Are oh, you yes. Checking it? Yes, yes. So that's, that's an important thing to do. Just don't go by time, go by appearance. Yeah, but for this flavor, you're probably going to take that long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? No. This is your big chance to ask questions after this. We're going to go uh, for a tour of the factory and then show you the exit. <laughs> That's it. Good. Any questions? You have, you know, super premium gelato, custard, frozen lemonade, dairy-free, Italian ice, homemade, uh, manual. Uh, so there's quite a few on there. Um, and like he had mentioned before, it always has that manual speed because every chef is different. So even though the RPMs are already set for each individual setting, you can, if you know it's really close to that one, but you want it five, five RPMs lower, just select that one and then just drop it down. And of course, you can always go to manual and then keep pushing it a bunch of times <laughs> until you get to the RPMs you like. When you work with Italian ice, there is no expansion. So it kind of doesn't matter which any button you push because it's just sugar, water, and fruit or sugar, water, and alcohol. Uh, dairy is where you're going to have your fat content. 
And uh, the faster the dasher spins, the more air you're putting into your product. The slower the dasher spins, the less air you're putting into it. So if you want to make a very light and fluffy ice cream, that's homemade. If you want to make it nice, thick, and heavy, that's going to be a custard, gelato, and a super premium. But and Italian that, ice is just sugar water. And that's what makes it such a unique invention uh, that people haven't copied, because I found a way that uh, as you slow the motor down, you're normally losing the pulling power, what we call in torque in cars. Uh, it, it, if you cut the speed in half, that motor doesn't have the strength to pull through that thick Italian ice. Uh, I found a way 22 years ago to make it so that no matter what speed I run that motor at, it's the full 100% power of the motor. Uh, like on the big machine, that's a three horsepower drive motor. No matter how, I could slow it down to uh, 55 RPM, it's still a three horsepower motor. And that's what makes it so unique. And that's why it's been 22 years and has yet to been copied. What is the fastest you can spin? 234, that's homemade. By law, ice cream cannot have more than 100% overrun. By law, you cannot. By law, you cannot have more than 100% overrun for ice cream. Why, I don't know, but you just can't. Well, it's a federally controlled thing. and Yeah, but, but why that number? Why not 105? Good idea. Same reason yeah. why if it's 9%, you can't call it ice cream. Exactly. It's got to be 10% yeah. or higher. Just so if you see, yeah, they ice. say low-fat ice cream, and then they advertise 6%. Well, according to the FDA, ice cream has to have 10% butter fat. So they call it low-fat ice cream, but it's really low-fat dairy frozen stuff. Yeah, well, they ended up just <laughs> calling it a frozen, a frozen dessert. Yeah, frozen dessert. So they can't even call that ice cream. Gelato gets around that because gelato wasn't, uh, the dairy industry, the FDA, didn't exist when gelato was first invented. So there are no restrictions on gelato. Gelato can be 12% fat, it could be 2% uh, fat, and still be called gelato because there are no federal laws for it. It's spitting all over me. Yeah, it just spit on me. <laughs> oh, so good. When you work with um, Italian ice, because it's going so fast, it's going to splash out at you. And now I'm going to be sticky. And Look at this. And Look at me. Here. <laughs> and you're putting more product into the machine than you would be if you were doing uh, ice cream. Oh, well. And also, when you work with Italian ice, you can add more to the machine. So you can always run at four quarts. Uh, four quarts of liquid, whether it's four quarts of wine and juice or wine and water, or water and, and your fruits, or whichever, you're, or a base, it can always be at that four quarts because there is no expansion. It, the machine doesn't need any room for your product to expand. Because it's a six quart machine, you're putting four quarts of liquid, you're gonna add your juice, it's just the ice crystals is what's freezing, so it's only, what, about 17% overrun? Mm -hmm. It's not much to count for anything. I originally rated the machine at uh, six quarts finished product. It actually makes seven. But we still, in all our advertising everywhere, you'll see six quarts. And then you'll be pleasantly surprised when you get more. Um, just, just a personal choice of what I wanted to do with the machine. Does everybody always like boozy products? Yay? Nay? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you got to know what you mean. <laughs> oh, you're not going to get nothing out of that. <laughs> Uh, what? I'll have his sample. Oh, okay. So two for her and zero for you. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything back there? Know everything? This was a very quiet group. They were okay. Yeah. They did good. Normally, it's we can't even have time to do, or not normally, but there's some groups where we don't even have time to tend to what we're doing because everybody's just going on and asking a thousand questions. So this is nice. How many have heard of dairy-free ice cream? Coconut, okay. How many are planning on making it? Good. <laughs> yeah, it should be all of you. Um, I have lived through a lot of fads and trends uh, over the time, and this dairy-free is truly a trend. Um, my, group, my age group, the baby boomers, there's uh, 72 million of them. There are 85 million millennials. 
And I, I, when, uh, dairy, when I first started getting involved in Dairy Free about three and a half years ago, I'd call up, let me know when you're ready, I don't want to interrupt. Um, I would call up some of the old time dairies out on Eastern Long Island, or ice cream parlors on Eastern Long Island, Massachusetts. People had been in business, family business, 70 years. And I'd say, what are you doing? I don't want to tell you about, I want to tell you about this Dairy Free product. And they'd cut me off. They'd say, listen, we've been, Steve, uh, we've been in business for 70 years. We sell very rich, very gooey, old-fashioned homemade ice cream, and we've got a big clientele. What do we need with that dairy-free? I said, I'll tell you what. You look out across who's in your store right now. You tell me how many people are in there in their uh, 20s and 30s. And he goes, well, there's one or two. And I said, well, I got some bad news for you. Those baby boomers are going to be what I call uh, aging out. You know, nice term for dropping dead. Um, we're going to be aging out, and what are you going to replace us with? Uh, a group of people that you don't even understand what they are interested in. They don't, you don't realize that they do not specifically want a dairy product. For whatever reason they want, uh, health, social, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I can make any flavor of ice cream that I do in ice cream, I can do it in dairy free. My personal preference is coconut uh, as, a, mm. as a base, coconut milk. Uh, or oat milk. Uh, I know Briars is playing with cashew, and pick up some dairy-free cashew uh, from Briars. It's like every bite is like eating the Sahara Desert. You know, <laughs> your mouth just gets drier and drier. The oat is great. I mean, the coconut is great, uh, but it does have a coconut background taste, which I find pleasing. But you can't make vanilla ice cream with a coconut background taste. Uh, the oat has no taste whatsoever. It's smoother, it's creamier, and whatever flavor I'm making is what the flavor of the oat is going to be. Um, do I have any of the oat bags around here? Or? Mommies? Um, yes. Um, I'll tell you about this, and Christy will tell you about the bladders. Um, this, is a pro this is a company called, um, she pronounces it Mommies Gelato, M-A-M-I-S. Uh, that's Italian, uh, M-A-M-I-S is Italian for mommy. And Naomi Posner is the president of this company and she came up with this. She first did coconut and the ingredients are uh, a coconut powder, uh, it's um, uh, some sugar and uh, cream of coconut. And it's all powdered and then you just add water and you've got a perfect coconut base. Uh, then she came out with the outrageous which is the same concept but it's still in this foil bag and you just add water and it, it becomes an oat product. Uh, both of them are excellent. Uh, easy to use, easy to store, doesn't matter where in the country you are. Christy, you want to tell them quickly about your uh, friends? Meadowvale. Over at um, Meadowvale. So Meadowvale also makes a dairy free, but it comes in a traditional bladder just like the ones that we used over here. It is a tapioca based. So it will thicken up quite, quite fast. So a traditional bladder, dairy bladder, you can let it thaw out and let it sit in your fridge for 10 days. A, the Dairy Free uh, by Meadowville, because it's tapioca based, it's going to get pretty thick within the next two days-ish. But let me tell you, the difference is night and day. It is so smooth and creamy. Uh, certain other dairy free products that you go to mix with water and let it bloom, it's kind of got like a grainy texture to it. Meadow Vales doesn't have that. It's smooth through and through. Uh, it's very creamy. It's very rich. Um, of course, it has the coconut background taste, so that is the only flavor that they do have. So whatever you do make, it needs to complement coconut, whether you want to make a coconut dairy-free. Uh, pumpkin cheesecake, I've done that with the dairy-free, and it came out great, the coconut pumpkin cheesecake. Uh, Steve makes a fantastic uh, grape nuts and golden raisins. Uh, that pairs very well with dairy-free. So it's just knowing what works with the coconut taste. Um, but Eddie Kahina, you can always reach out to me and I can send you his info. And he's a really, really, really sweet, sweet, great guy. My personal taste on the coconut, uh, on the dairy-free would tend towards um, Eddie's product, Meadow, Meadow Bale, Bale uh, if you can get it. It's not everywhere in the country. It's, it is a fantastic product. Uh, for doing flavors where I'm not gonna have any background taste, uh, I like the oats. I like yes. the outrageous because there is no taste to it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're working with my ice cream formulas, I have 528. Now we're going to have six more. 
at emerythompson.com if you're working with my flavors in ice cream. You can take my ice cream flavor and translate it over to dairy free with one exception and that is uh, the oat especially and somewhat the coconut. Uh, they don't have, oat has no taste so it's like making an Italian ice. You have to add the taste into the water. Uh, the oat uh, you, take, you take my Oreo cookie recipe, and if it says one bag of Oreo cookies, if you're using oat, two bags, because there's no flavor in here. Uh, this is the carrier. It's the oat. Um, but it's, uh, the, the whole concept is absolutely fantastic. Both of these, all of these cost more. So if right. you're getting the average of $5 a scoop for ice cream, you should be getting $6 for the dairy-free. Here we go. And this... This product, uh, some people would say, oh, it's dairy-free, it has no uh, dairy in it. Um, yes, but you're not fooling the millennial age group. That is not what they call dairy-free. That's Italian ice. We, we uh, baby boomers can associate Italian ice. They are not the same product. Dairy-free is own, its own separate. I once said three years ago, nobody's ever going to open up just a dairy-free store. Well, I must know six dozen dairy-free stores around the country now. I did predict, predict, predict correctly that the first one would happen in San Francisco, and it did. <laughs> Two, three, four. Have you ever had that oat leaf on before? The what? Selling the store called oat leaf. O-A-T-L-E-Y, oat leaf. No, I... Yeah, no, I haven't. The label, there's so many chemicals in it. Yeah, and uh, most everything in the grocery store is that way because they have to make it last for six months or longer. Right. We don't. Sure. Okay. This is really good. It looks good. <laughs> the color's nice. Yeah. It's kind of a purple. You guys all excited? Yeah, it looks good. That's the best part about uh, working here is you can eat and drink alcohol on yeah, the job. Sorry. It's also the worst part of the job. Because <laughs> you have to watch what you eat and drink on the job. Yeah, if any of you noticed, I have not made myself a cup. I taste a, a taste of it. Just doing so, you know, you kind of pack on the pounds working here. <laughs> this is like a great, you know, holiday flavor, and you can even make it just regular, just rename it, but Cranberry Cosmo kind of goes with Christmas. Is that ice cream? Oh no, it's coming out on the side. If you don't open the gate all the way like I do, it won't do that. When you work with alcohol content um, in your product, it will melt a lot faster than traditional. Uh, and your scooping temperature too can be higher because it's already soft from the alcohol. So if I was to take Steve's lemon ice and this and put it next to each other, this one's going to melt awfully quickly. Um, that's when stabilizers come in handy, but we don't really like to use those. And it's not really necessary. Um, I'll tell you what, my 15-year-old, my she will flat out tell you what product has stabilizer in it just by looking at it now. And she can tell. And she'll, she'll see ice cream trucks or Italian ice trucks and then she'll look at somebody else while she goes, no, they use stabilizers. <laughs> and if, if, in fact, if you take my product, Christie's product, and go buy some briars, this time tomorrow the briars will still be frozen. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't melt. It, it doesn't melt. It's, no. it's funny how the stuff won't melt because it's got so much chemicals in it. The idea of ice cream should be milk, cream, sugar, skim milk. Uh, my um, uh, dairy-free is... Uh, uh, coconut milk, cream of coconut, you know, it comes in the can, you know, to make bar drinks in Key West. Mm -hmm. Coconut milk, cream of coconut, sugar, or I can use uh, allulose. Uh, I make, I make sugar-free Italian ice. Allulose is a uh, blend of rare fruits, and I have six recipes. You email me, and I'll send them to you. You can substitute that <laughs> in there for the sugar. Um, and now you're hitting a whole new market that nobody else is and uh, except Emory Thompson users, and I, I hope it stays that way. You ask my competition about dairy-free, they'll go, oh, sure, we'll give you an Italian ice. You know, they, they don't understand it. So, you know, um, when I was a kid, 
had grown up in Philadelphia, we were very familiar with Briars because that's where they started. And before Kraft bought them, they didn't have any chemicals in their ice cream. No, it was one of the best ice creams around. It was the best ice cream I ever ate. Yeah. That uh, vanilla fudge. Swirl and, with the vanilla and had the swirl in it, and, and, ju no and just like Hershey's, Briar started with Emory Thompson's. Oh, yeah, so this one. It's really good. Yeah, very good. This yeah? is the best one I've had. Good. Good wow, to hear. best of the day. Where's <laughs> Jack? <laughs> Where's Jack? He doesn't do Italian ice, really. He only does uh, ice cream and um, cream, cream ice. ice. That's it for him, but I think it's just he's not an Italian ice fan. <laughs> the uh, the profits are in Italian ice. He figures if you got somebody in the door, get the most money out of them. I guess. Right. But. I've used that theory before. I say if there's a hurricane coming today and only one person's going to come through the door, you want to extract as much money from them as you can. A more updated version of that is you give them the best thing on earth and the lines will form around the block. Now the updated version is the right one. Yeah. You know, give them, yeah. don't worry about the cost of the product, just make it, charge a high price for it. Uh, price, the prices of these products are insensitive uh, because you're going to buy it if you want it and you're not going to buy it if you don't want it. Um, I mean, who, who, who goes into a pizza parlor and argues over the price of the pizza? It's either the pizza I want, and we all have our own favorite pizza parlor. Uh, it's either that pizza or it's no pizza. <laughs>